Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Development Control B meeting today. Can I just remind everybody that, in actual fact, we're being live streamed out in the big wide world. So welcome to anybody that's uh, watching us. I do hope they are. Um, and I'm afraid I've put stripes on for the camera, which I'm sure won't do any good. Um, so um, introductions first. Um, First of all, remind you of some domestic arrangements. Toilets are situated outside the meeting room opposite the stairs. Cold water is also available in the breakout area outside the meeting room. If the fire alarm should sound, please leave the meeting room, follow the fire exit signs and meet on the Ipswich Football Town training pitch. Do not re-enter the building until you are told it's safe to do so. Please switch off all mobile phones or turn them to silent. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be, be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be filmed, except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation at the meeting, you will be deemed by the council to have consented to being filmed and the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcast and or training purposes. The Council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not lawfully excluded. Finally, can members and officers please ensure that you press the microphone for speaking and turn off when you have finished. So I now go through the introductions. Um, on the top table here we have Ian Dupre, who is our legal officer, John Pateman G, the senior planning manager, there's obviously myself, Cathy Guthrie. We have Robert Carmichael, who's the committee officer. Then we have Jack Wilkinson, who will be presenting an item. We're just going to move the order of the items very quickly, but for a short item. And then we've got Mandy Smith, who's in control of our uh, functions on the internet. We also have sitting over to the left there, planning officers and representation of the uh, council, and they will come down and present the case. And to my right, I have members of the committee. We are now members numbering eight on the committee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, that's good. Um, and um, so they will debate um, once the meeting has gone ahead, and they will make a decision. Um, for those of you who haven't been here before, just a, a quick update of what happens is that um, the officers will present the case, and then members of the committee have the opportunity to ask questions. But the question should be short and succinct, and what they've seen they might trigger a question for them. It's not an area of debate for them. The same for the um, parish council, um, objector, supporter, applicant. Again, they'll present their case, and then they will um, have the opportunity, our members have the opportunity to ask questions. Again, it's not a debating forum, just quick questions that needs clarity. And then we move on to the debate, and the debate will move with um, people literally debating it. And again, um, it's a good idea that uh, the debate starts, and we listen to the debate, and then uh, someone may propose uh, one of the recommendations or an alternative recommendation, and, and then we make a decision. So that's the way it moves forward in our committee here. So apologies for absence and substitutions. Thank you, Chair. We have apologies from Councillor Carter, and this morning Councillor Mansell is substituting for Councillor Carter. Thank you. And to receive any declarations of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest by members. Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair. Oh, that's me. Madam Chair, at last. Thank you. Um, item two, um, alerts in the parish of Coombs does have an effect on Stowmarket. Non-pecuniary interest as a town councillor. Thank 
you for that. Anyone else? Yes, Councillor Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm the uh, board member for Walton Willows, and so item 7A have a non pecuniary interest. Thank you for that. And indeed, you'll move aside, and then you can speak as board member in that item. Thank you. Declarations of lobbying. And I think all of us might have received a declaration from the county councillor regarding the totem pole. Okay, well, Councilor not all Bill. of us then. Yeah, Councillor Matheson, Councillor Mayor, Councillor Guthrie, and, Gold, and me, also, uh, yes. Councillor Norris, did you receive anything? Councillor Norris, did you receive anything from Councillor Fleming? No, right, thank you for that. Thank you. Declarations. Declarations of personal site visits? No. Um, the only thing that I can declare is I used to live down the lane where one of the applications is brought forward, but haven't been there for 20 years. So we now move on to confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of April 2019. And what I propose to do is to go from page one right through to page 17 and ask if there's any amendments that you wish to make and if you're happy with um, the fact that you haven't come up with anything there, then can I sign them as being a true record? I'm sure you've read them earlier. So I'll take that as, can I have a vote that I can sign them? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll sign them later because I've got to do all 17 pages. All right. To receive notification of petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme. Thank you, Chair. We have no petitions received. Thank you. Um, now, the schedule of the planning applications, the planning applications will remain the same. The only thing that we will bring forward, if uh, um, people don't mind, because the officer has another um, appointment to make, is the site inspection. And so um, Jack Wilkinson is just going to present that case to us for a site visit. That's right at the back of your papers. If you look at page 225, um, which is where the back of that is. So thank you, Jack, if you just do that for us. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, members. Good morning, members of the public. Um, the first item is uh, land southwest of Main Road in Somersham. Um, this is in receipt of a member site visit uh, request. Rob, how does it bump on? Uh, does it not just click mm -hmm. through? Mm -hmm. Click through. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Just, just, just do next for the time being. Mm -hmm. Members do have a paper copy of this, so if we can refer to that and move on, if it's not going to get <coughs> stuck. So as mentioned, um, your officers are in receipt of a formal site visit request uh, for members to inspect. Um, having consulted the governance support officer assessment on site by members is wholly relevant, um, and your officers concur with that request. The application is for 42 dwellings in Somersham, together with associated public open space, access roads, garaging and car parking. <laughs> right, this is an art. Councillor Mansell. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, I've got the paperwork on page 225 onwards in my document, but uh, we don't seem to have a copy of the formal member request, which I would have thought was pertinent to the case. Thank you, Councillor. Just as a point on that, usually we wouldn't 
include that in the normal member request that would be with the application when it came to committee. It's only um, expedient of Mr. Wilkinson here on my left who had the presentation ready, otherwise we wouldn't usually have it in the papers ready for members. So, um, it would, But it will be coming to the committee when um, the application is properly considered. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Matheson, can we just hear from Councillor Matheson? Oh, right. um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely clear who's asking for the site visit. As it happens, I, I can't go on it anyway. Um, but there seems to be a departure from our previous kind of way of doing these things. Um, so I'm just... Thank you for that observation. I usually recall that people just ring in and ask for it and we just say at the end of the meeting that we're going on a site visit. So this is a little more amplified, a little more helpful. So it's different. Occasionally Philip comes and says, we think you should have yep. a site visit. Well, it's now being done formally this way as well. So, so that he is so behind the asking or someone is? Well, I think... Yes. Uh, the formal asking of it was by former councillor Killett. Um, before she um, oh, so went to, uh, well, uh, wasn't a member anymore at the council. So um, it comes from that, it's a hangover. And with, as Councillor Killett was a former member of the council, we, it was only uh, natural justice really that um, we to undertake the wishes of that councillor at that time. Thank you, Chair. So to carry on, the site is located in Somersham towards the uh, western fringe. As you can see, the defined outline of the village is set there in purple, um, with the site located by the red marker. Principally, countryside location, albeit it is set within the body of the village, as defined by the red line outline. I won't go into too much detail with regards to the uh, full plans layout. This is a full plans plan application um, for which it would be best to inspect on site to understand the gradient and indeed the uh, landscaping in the surrounding area. Um, these plans are as part of the proposal um, and that brings us to a concluding uh, point with regards to potential dates. Um, the recommendation from your offices is for site visit on the 3rd of July um, with a follow-up committee meeting um, subject to all consultees and uh, comments being received back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just one moment, please. Um. Sorry, I saw two hands go up and one of them was Councillor Norris. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was just going to ask, do we have a time for this site visit or did I miss that? The time hasn't been given out yet, but we will give it out before the site when we normally have the papers sent out to us with the um, directions on where we're meeting. Oh. Councillor Mansell. Uh, thank you. Um, was I, I might have just missed something. Can you just... Uh, confirm that this is a full planning application, not an outline? It is indeed, yes, a full plans plan application. And I'm going to ask a question. Would it be useful if members brought the papers with the uh, plans on it here with them um, so that we can take them with us uh, to the meeting? But I'm sure the officers will bring along a little extra, but it's always good to save paper, isn't it? Thank you. Sorry, Chair, just to add, um, if members of the previous development control B may recall, um, there was a site that Mr Russell presented to um, the committee last time, which is in Ofton, um, which is also still to be confirmed um, at the time. If um, the application is likely to be in the near future, we would look to be putting them at the, at the same time. So this would be to visit two sites, and Ofton is only slightly, is a very short distance away from Somersham, so we would look at both at the same time, if that's agreeable to members. And also, I presume, we'll get some papers in advance, so then we Absolutely. can do it sort of half in the old-fashioned way and half in this way that we've had a presentation. So I propose that we accept those dates uh, for a site visit, so I've proposed that. Can I have a seconder, please? 
Thank you, Councillor Mayor. So all those in favour of a site visit, please vote. And we are unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, this application that's before you this morning, members, is an outline application for res residential development on a site of Badwell Ash in the, um, the ward of Walsham Le Willows, um, which is located on that map in that position in Mid Suffolk. This site, uh, this plan shows the site proposal or the proposal site of the proposed development and you'll see you'll be able to note around there the existing development of the settlement of Badwell Ash um, and the arrangement of dwellings in relation to um, the road hierarchy. Um, this is a useful plan because it shows constraints that are relevant in relation to the consideration of the application. The dark line that you can see there, um, which is drawn around the settlement, is in effect the settlement boundary, which is defined in the local plan. Um, the green colour that you can see there is the extent of the special landscape area in which the site is located, which you will note covers that side of the village in effect. Um, other constraints, not necessarily constraints, but other things you should be aware of are local footpath network, which is identified, and also the position of nearby heritage assets, grade two and grade two star listed buildings, which are shown as orange and reddish colour. This is an aerial photograph which shows the site um, in relation to the surroundings. This is a useful context photograph because you can hopefully just about make out the established trees and hedging that surround the majority of the site, bar the frontage onto the street in Badwell Ash, um, and the wider green infrastructure network, which obviously contributes to the overall character of the area. The application, as I said, is an outline. Um, the I would emphasise, and hopefully you've had a chance to, to look through the report, the means of access to the site um, for planning permission is being sought for that. So the position you see on the plan there of the access onto the street would be fixed were planning permission to be granted. The remainder of the development would be a reserved matter. This is an illustrative plan which demonstrates that you can actually achieve a development of 21 units on the site um, and you'll also note there's an area of open space here which I'll refer to later on in the presentation. Um, it's a general form insofar as it's a, a cul-de-sac of development um, with lesser hierarchy roads leading off the main spine um, with dwellings relating spatially directly to that that area and there's also a subsidiary area of open space to the rear. This plan is um, showing what would be required via condition if the application were approved. It's the form of the new access going into the site uh, and you'll note a footpath that's actually leading down that side of the access 
which would link the orange colour down to the ex existing provision uh, in the village, which, which finishes approximately there, um, thereby enabling uh, a safe means of access to services in the village. Um, I'll finish with some photographs of the site. This is the open frontage, um, and you may recall I mentioned the open space, which is on the open frontage. Um, that would remain as part of the redevelopment proposal at the density proposed, so the general character of that area would be retained. The other things you will note in that photograph is the um, residential development directly opposite. Um, this is a view down, further down the street. Um, that's the, the access you see in the corner there is existing access onto the site. Um, the footpath, which would be requested through condition or secured through condition, would extend across and down to that point there. So basically, I think in the, in the report I've referred to approximately 20 metres of footpath. Um, this site is, sorry, this plan is showing again the existing development on the other side of the road. The other important thing to bear in mind is that the council have previously allowed newer infill um, within the village um, and you'll see that that is immediately adjacent to historic buildings, albeit that they're not actually listed. It's clearly a, one of the older buildings in the village. So the issue of setting um, and in relation to established development, I think has been considered previously and, and dealt with sensitively. This is a view down Langham Road, which forms basically the northern boundary. And I've, the reason I've included this one um, is that it, A, it shows established hedging and trees, and B, the containment that's afforded by the road. So therefore, there is no possibility of sporadic um, spreading out to the countryside. That's a view across the site showing the existing use, which is equestrian. Uh, and again, another view down the end of the road, which shows the containment. And further down that road on the opposite side is um, domestic curtilages of dwellings that are um, already in the area. Um, I've got no updates since writing the report to advise you of. Um, the conclusions and material points, as I've said in the report, it is a departure. This isn't allocated land for residential development at this stage. That said, um, given the materiality of uh, considerations here, we feel that it does constitute a sustainable form of development. It is a site that's being considered in the latest Sheila um, as a possible site for residential development. Um, this has obviously come forward in advance of that, but given the circumstances pertaining to this site, we feel that subject to securing the legal agreement which is set out in your report uh, and the conditions which are summarised, uh, a planning permission could be granted. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Bradley. Um, just a couple of points. Um, I think we need to make it quite clear um, where we've um, had issues before where it says up to... Um, and on page 33 it says 21. So I think as a committee we need to be clear on the amount of uh, housing that we're looking at here. So members might like to bear that in mind when we come to the debate. Um, and another point, um, there was a, an outline planning permission withdrawn for erection of up to 40 dwellings. And I did ask um, in briefing when that was and uh, it seems it was the first of the third 19. So this has come in uh, quite recently thereafter. It's just a point I'd like to make anyway. So does anybody have any questions for the officer that hasn't been covered already? Um, Councillor Gould, then Councillor Mann. Uh, thank you. Um, looking at page 31, uh, I'm wondering about the comments of the planning policy team. I wonder if someone can amplify uh, on, on, on those points uh, and the refusal recommendation, which seems at odds with the, uh, with the other planning advice in the report. Thank you. Yes, the um, comments of the planning policy team, um, there is an issue with their advice, it undermines a, undermines a plan-led approach, which is the, the key policy issue, um, I would suggest. And in this case, we've decided that, notwithstanding the fact that it's not allocated at this site, if you um, look at the criteria that are specific to this site um, and consider the application on its merits in principle, it does satisfy sustainable development. So there is, you know, a conflict with the, con uh, uh, with the comment we've received from policy. 
on that point, but as I've tried to explain in the report, I think there are sound planning reasons to allow this in advance of that. The other things I would say that have raised in relation to scale of development, impacts on listed buildings, landscape and form of development, I think, again, those issues can be satisfactorily addressed. So um, I know they've raised those in the comments, but it's something that we're content with. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Mansell, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I've got um, a couple of questions. Uh, one, it relates to the uh, proposed access for the site, which is part of the full planning application. Um, can you just um, explain where it is in relation to the existing access to the whatever it is that's on the site? And my other question is related to the hedging um, that has been mentioned as being in a special landscape area. And I know that um, what we're looking at here is outline planning uh, with only the road access as, as being determined today. But is there any way we can put any condition about protecting the, the hedging and the trees around the site because it's in a special landscape area? Apologies, I'll just get back to the slide to explain the, um, the first point. The, um, <clears throat> the existing access is tucked, it starts right at the corner of the site um, and continues up, for, I would say, about that sort of distance at the moment. So you'll see that this new point of access is shifting it slightly north, north of the, um, the existing access. Um, in terms of the hedging and trees, um, you're right, we would consider impacts on hedging and trees at the time of reserve matters application. I think the layout that is shown on the illustrative plan, at least, does show that you could retain all of that and the tree that's already on site. But I think, um, I mean, I seek advice from John, but I think possibly you could deal with it as an informative on a planning uh, permission on an outline, but I don't know if John's got a view on that. Thank you. Um, ultimately, reserve matters includes landscaping, so landscaping will be dealt with at that time. So it, you are safe not to specifically impose any conditions on this outline application in that regard, because you do have a, a, sec a second bite of the cherry, if you like, at that reserve matter stage. And we can look at the layout at that time and work out if indeed the, any of the hedgerow is, is under any kind of threat. Um, the uh, alternative, yes, we could put an informative to say we have concerns around that, so when you come to reserve matters, make sure that that is an issue that is defined within the reserve matters. We could put a condition on to say specifically that part of the hedging shall be retained in any reserve matters application coming forward, but ultimately it, it could be argued to fail the test of being necessary on the basis that uh, landscaping is part of reserve matters. Thank you for that. Councillor Matheson. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I, I was um, particularly struck by the, the planning policy point which, which has, has, has now been raised and I was a bit more surprised when the officer actually referred to the fact that the, the land had been put forward um, for potentially for development. Um, Could you ask your question please? Uh, yes, well, the, 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 question, the, the question really is, is the second point which is that the, uh, the, the report summary suggests the environmental sustainability officer um, disappointment, etc. In fact, um, I, I'm reading his submission, he actually requests refusal. Um, so we've actually got two sections asking for refusal there. So what was the question? Well, the question is... In fact... Sorry. Oh, hang on. Well, I think the officers made a, 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 a decision on uh, weighing it up. You explained it earlier on that one, so I think that answers that question so there. Which environmental officer is he referring to? I think to he's that? referring to the planning yes, policy. Sir. Right, so we move on then, if we may, please. 
Um, we don't have anyone from the parish council, an objector, a supporter, or the applicant or the agent, but we do have our ward member. Did you take your card with you so you can switch your speaker on? Yes, I did. Oh, ahead of the game. Well done. <laughs> so, Councillor Mayor, if you'd like to give us uh, a little extra for your area, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have very little to add. Um, from the paperwork, it, you can see that Bagwell Ash Council have no objections to the uh, scheme. I would highlight their concerns over the hedging whilst it doesn't form part of what we're discussing today that they feel that the hedging could be improved and perhaps that's something for a later date and it is again uh, a concern of the schooling uh, the, the local school closed two years ago and any development will put pressure and have ongoing costs as all the children will really need to be bused to the various schools in the area nothing further thank you Thank you for that. Anyone have any further questions for the ward member? Yes, Councillor Mansell, thank you. Uh, well, I'm not sure if this is for the ward member, but um, uh, what he's just said has made me think about the schooling because I am aware of the situation uh, and, I, just, and, they, and I, I don't know that there's anything in the paperwork about the number of spaces at Norton Primary School, which is where I believe Badwell Ash children are in the catchment for Norton School. Um, so I just wondered if, if there was space there or whether they needed to, you know... That sounds like something for debate, but if you actually look on page 56, I think you'll find there is uh, a, a special uh, from the county they've responded regarding the funds required, so it's all covered in there, if you'd like to read that, if you haven't already looked there. Thank you. So we move on now, if we may, please. And Yes, we're now into debate. So, who would like to debate? You've got some points that you've made forward. Would anybody like to start the debate? Well, Councillor, Councillor Humphreys, thank you very much. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, just to kick it off, really, uh, this seems like a reasonable development where it's quite refreshing to see they've reduced the numbers from 40 to 21, which is appropriate for that size of land, uh, rather than trying to cram them in like you'd get on normal estates. So, uh, so well done on the design for that, and I'm glad it's come back as 21. Uh, the affordable housing rate is quite high as well, which is nice to see, especially in rural areas where it's required. So that's a good thing. Um, there is no objection from the uh, parish council. Um, there are some points, and again, that will come back when it comes back to, to us. So no issues with the landscaping. Um, footpaths are all there. The landscaping seems good. The schooling's been addressed, and it's quite clear in here how much money's being actually raised where the money's going and how we're affording people to get to school. So I think everything's been covered within the papers if you read thoroughly through it. Um, so if there's no more debate, I'd be minded to move approval for this application. Uh, thank you for that. Can we just make uh, clarity on it regarding that it is 21 and no more houses on this because it says up to. Yeah. Mind you, if they want less, I suppose they can put less. Yes. <laughs> do, do you want to comment on Yes, that? please do. So the proposal before you is for up to 21, but you really need to debate this as if you're looking at a scheme of 21 and all effects and impacts of that scheme. Um, just for, for noting, I've got that down as 15 dwellings per hectare, is that correct? Um, your policy actually seeks uh, 30 uh, dwellings per hectare, which would in this case mean about 42 houses. So this is well and truly under uh, your policy requirements. Um, in that respect. But of course your policy does allow for members to consider the uh, overarching character and prevailing pattern of development in the area. So uh, you can allow a decrease in the number of dwellings proposed and in this case it's 15 per hectare. So I have, yes, Councillor Mansell. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I listened to um, Councillor Humphreys uh, talking about landscaping and yet we were told that landscaping wasn't part of this actual application so the landscaping isn't there um, and um, as I mentioned before um, I think it would be appropriate to put an informative on the on the land on the hedging and the trees because the parish council have raised it um, I, I must admit I welcome the fact that the parish council have no objection to this scheme but they are concerned about the hedging and the trees so I think we should take that into consideration uh, and put it as an informative. I know that doesn't count for much, but it will remind the committee when they do come to look at the reserve matters that that is what we um, are interested in. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the schooling. Uh, now I've read the piece of paper because they, the, the children from this development are likely to have to be 
uh, bused to outside of catchment school and um, I'm not quite sure what happens with um, paying for school transport these days. Um, so that is, it's a real shame in a way that Badwalash Primary School did shut and of course it's just an empty site and we don't know what's going to happen there either. Um, but on the, on the face of it, I'm quite inclined to support this. I, I'm not quite going to second it because I'd like something about the informative about the hedging to be put in. Um, I think a, 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 a development of 21 houses um, is a lot better than the 40 of the withdrawn application. And to be honest, I think 21 houses is probably an appropriate sort of size for the community of Badwell Ash. It's got a little shop, it's got a pub, and it will help those businesses thrive to have a little bit more housing in Badwell Ash. So uh, I think I'm likely to support this, but I would like to do something about the hedging. Thank you for that. Councillor Humphreys is just putting his hands up. I think he's probably going to say oh, something. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, just a point on the landscape. Um, I don't say it unless it's true. Um, if you go to page 36, 7.3. In addition, the fact that the site is bounded by Langham Road to the north, east and north west, augmented by established hedging, would mean that it's effectively contained and proposed development would not appear to encroach on the surrounding countryside. Therefore, it's considered that the proposal would not have an adverse effect. It also goes on down there, in 7.4, that it is noted that existing feature trees would be retained, along with the boundary hedging, which would also assist in filter screening, blah, blah, blah. So it is actually in there. Thank you for that. Does anyone else like to comment? Can we just have one conversation, please? Can we... Yes, Councillor Gould? Thank you. I listened to Had to... I uh, just wanted to echo... Uh, Councillor Humphrey's uh, comments, and I'd be. This seems a, a very uh, sensible scheme, both in scale uh, and location, uh, and I'd um, uh, be happy to second uh, the proposal. Thank you for that. Does anyone else wish to speak, Councillor Matheson? Yeah, I, I would very much like to see a condition as requested by the Environmental Sustainability Officer on page 64. Um, which um, he, he, does, he does make various comments after he's requested refusal, um, that, you know, if, in other words, if we're minded to approve, etc. Um, and uh, the, the getting the, that strategy put in place at an early stage is going to be the, um, the way forward in the emerging joint local plan. And um, the planning officer can deal with that point. Uh, it's, um, it's on page 40. There is a, in the list of suggested conditions, Councillor, there's one at the end which advises provision and approval of sustainability and energy strategy. I, I, I understand the concern about that, and um, I think the point we were unsuccessfully trying to make in the report was that because the concern has been expressed at what is an outline stage, we still have to go through reserve matters where the issues of sustainability would have to be designed in as part of a detailed planning application. So it's not that we're, we're trying to push those concerns aside, it's really saying that at this stage we're not able to make that judgement because we haven't got the information in front of us. Thank you for that. Uh, well, Councillor Matheson, yes, I think um, that was explained. Yeah, the, the, really, the, the, officer is, the officer is actually arguing that there is a need to, to actually have a strategy of how we use the land to achieve the best sustainability and that you need to do that at the earliest stage. And as I say, that approach is being adopted in the emerging joint local plan. Uh, the planning officer is going to come back on this. I don't want to dwell on this. We're, we've got the planning officer to give us a little more information. Thank you. Strictly speaking, the policy position on this is not overly helpful at this stage. We, we have an out of date local plan um, there's the tilt of balance on that basis to consider. That's why we're here with this application. But ultimately, in terms of renewables, sustainability, those elements, um, our current local plan position is not particularly helpful. So strictly, we are imposing this condition, and I'm not actually overly satisfied that we should be Im imposing it at all. However, in your papers, we have included that request so that we can explore at reserve matter stage what elements we could put into that scheme when that comes forward and when it is known what those elements are. Um, and that is as far as we can go and as far as I'm really willing to go 
in respect of the current policy position that we have for this. And if I may just pick up on the schooling issue very briefly, um, that is secured in terms of school transportation via 106 agreement, and that is part of your recommendation on page 40. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for that. I have a proposer and a second. Yes, Councillor Manson. Um, I'd just like some clarity on the landscaping because the, we have the councillors saying that the landscaping is in the um, application and I thought I heard Mr Pateman G say that landscaping was a reserve matter. So um, either the landscaping is, is part of this proposal or it isn't. Um, and I, at the moment I think there is some confusion about what we're talking about. Okay, so in terms of the proposed landscaping, existing landscaping, we have an indicative plan, and it is indicative, that illustrates at this time that a layout can go forward without, in our opinion, undue impact on the existing landscaping that is there at this current time, which I would point out is unprotected at this time. Um, so ultimately, we consider that given that such low density and the amount of green space that's being proposed here, you can certainly come up with various layouts that would en or enable a scheme at reserve matters to be judged that would not have an effect on the existing landscaping. But of course, you get to judge that at that time in any way. And if it does have an adverse impact on the, the landscaping, that might be a reason you refuse the reserve matters. In terms of proposed landscaping, which is a reserve matter, we don't know what that's going to be because that's not before us either. But the indicative plan shows that there is a likelihood, given the space available, to put a very successful scheme together. Um, we could put an informative note to stress the concern of the members to say that actually just be very careful with your reserve matters layout. Um, ultimately, we want to keep as much hedging as possible. But at this moment in time, given the information we have and the likely probability, that is certainly possible and not something that we feel as officers we really need to unduly restrict because reserve matters can definitely deal with it in this case. In some cases where houses are shown on an initiative plan so close to the boundaries and there is no room because of the number of houses being proposed, we might get a bit you know, unsure about whether it is actually possible or not to save that hedge. I think in this case, given the density we're talking about, that is not the recommendation officers are making, but members obviously can go forward and do what they want in terms of that debate. Um, well, I haven't entered the debate, but I think um, everything does seem to be covered, and I'm very happy with the um, advice offered by the uh, senior planning officer. So uh, the proposer and the secondary, are you happy with where we are at the moment? So um, if, if you think you can refuse this on other grounds, then I need to know them. But all those in favour of the proposal and the secondary, please vote. And those against? One, two, sorry. Two. Thank you very much, and we move on. We're now on page 81, and um, we have Mark Russell, oh, there you are, is going to present the case for us. Um, and... Good morning, everyone. Um, we have before us a reserved matters application for a site which um, received a hybrid permission in 2017 um, for 75 dwellings, which is what it got full permission for. And on this outline phase, it got uh, permission for up to 110 dwellings. What the applicant has actually come in is with 90 dwellings. There's, there's a lot of bungalows. So they take up more room, so they've gone for 90 dwellings. So just to um, explain the geography somewhat, you've got uh, Poplar Hill to the south. This is actually in the parish of Cums, although it, actually, it does abut Stowmarket. The 
area to the north, which um, has red roofs on it, that's the one that's already got permission and it's largely, if not completely built out now, it, it's nearing its um, final stages. To the south, you'll see a phase two and a phase three referred to, and that's just the applicant's building phases, that's, that's what they want to call it. Both of those are up uh, for discussion today. That, that is what today's um, application is, and also the little bit of blue land to the south, which is open space. Just to give you some orientation, um, there was slide three there, um, that's the site. Slide four shows, it's a constraints map. You see there just, just about no constraints. Um, there's a footpath which goes um, from the southwest to the northeast along the bottom there, and that, that's pretty much all there is in terms of interest there. Agricultural classifications, um, you've got um, two to the north, three to the south. Um, this shows uh, protected species where you can see the purple dots. And triple SI impact zone. And now onto the aerial photographs, which give us um, more of an idea of, of what's on the ground at the moment. This is actually out of date because it, it hasn't shown any of the houses that are being built. I'll show you those in just a moment. Coming out a little bit more, you can see um, the village of Coombs proper to the south there just coming into view, but you see how it associates itself physically with, with Stowe Market. OS map, and we come to the layout. So you'll see that the, um, the south of the site and also the southwest are showing strategic open spaces. Um, I'll pull this out a bit in a minute to, to show you that more of the context, but this was understood at the outline stage and it's been carried through. So you've got the junction on the eastern side, which has full planning permission. So the earlier application was a hybrid, full permission for those houses at the back, plus this access here. That's got full permission. So, that, so the reserve matters application is everything to the south, um, excluding the access, that's already got permission. I've put these on here just to show you that there is affordable and sheltered housing um, in, in the blue and the red outlines there. So that's all the affordable stuff. But there are some market sheltered units there as well. There's about 34 sheltered units, which earlier on, uh, it had thought there might be a care home, but it's, it's being presented as sheltered units now. Now I've tried something a bit different here. It looks like a heat map. It's actually supposed to be um, a contour map. So the red is the highest, then the yellow and green, and the blue is the lowest. Our site is there, so it's our bit of the site that we're looking at today is located on that, on that tongue of slightly higher land, surrounded by slightly lower land, um, although it is itself just a bit lower than the um, red land there to the, the south. And viewpoints of importance are those shown here. Um, I've, I've got a a photograph I can show you in a bit, um, which was taken of a, from a drone um, showing you the shape of the land. But that goes from the north, looking south across the site. That, that's a viewpoint. Also from the south and also from the east, where that red circle shows the listed church. The houses themselves, I've taken some of the slides off. You'd have got many slides in, in, the, um, in the printout. Um, they're a pretty decent quality, I think, that the detailing is, is well considered. There's about a dozen or so different types. And um, personally, I think they've, they've done well here. They've, they've gone the extra mile with the detailing. And you've got a little row at one point where there's some sheltered houses. It's like a, an arms house um, effect, which, which I, I think is, is very pleasant. So from the north, um, it was actually, John did these drone um, photographs back in 2015, 16. Um, you're looking from the north across the site. Now the first bit of rough field you can see there is now the one that has been built on. So there's our site. That's the one we're talking about today. In between us and that is the housing that has been built. Views um, into the site as it's being constructed from the north and northwest. Now, as you can see here, this is an up-to-date uh, aerial photograph. It shows us um, the site having been built out, more or less. And if I just uh, transplant our site onto it, you'll see how that relates to it. So if I go back, that's where we are now. That's what we're talking about. That has got outline permission already. So the principle and everything is already agreed. It's all about whether you like the layout. 
just to also put in the strategic open space that I mentioned, and planting, and also if you just train your eyes to the south west, there's a little green um, bit of hedging there basically. Now the application drawings don't show that, they show all the other things but not that hedging and Coombs Parish Council has asked, yeah, has asked whether, um, thank you Mr Carmichael, yes, talking about here, yes, um, has asked whether the whole site could be, you know, have, have planting around it. Um, the applicant has almost done it, it's just that little bit there didn't show it, so I'm, I'm suggesting that we will have that. Now, the complication is that the outline permission was quite heavily conditioned and it had a landscaping strategy condition. So although you've got these drawings in front of you and these are the indicative layouts for the landscaping, that's where the landscaping will go because we're agreeing where the houses will go, therefore the leftover bit is the landscaping, is the open space. Um, that's left over to condition to be discharged. I've discussed with the landscaping officer. She, she's reasonably happy with most things, although I suggested maybe the, maybe the, um, the road could have one or two trees along, along the line of it as it goes through the site. Uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to do that, but, but generally speaking, the strategic landscaping belt is there um, and, is, and is to be discharged by condition. So to conclude um, the report, you'll see in the initial report, the Highway Authority had one or two concerns. Those have been overcome. Um, our Highway Authority officer has said she has no objections now to the amended drawing that was shown. Um, the permission does exist in outline, so it has permission already. Um, it's a good scheme. The design's very well thought out, and the landscaping will be left over to discharge of condition. So the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Um, I think the senior planning officer just wants to make a comment as well. Please, yes, Councillor Mansell, I know what it will be, and it's coming from here, I think. Can I just wait until we get this response? Uh, just two aspects of this I'd just like to comment on. Uh, the first is actually the landscaping. Um, we have a bit of a legacy that landscaping conditions were imposed on outline applications, even though the reserve matters would then come later. It is a legacy that's going to take us a couple of years to get over because it was a pro an approach f from certain planning officers at the time. So this is actually not one of those cases, but just to be aware that there is an inconsistency there as we try to avoid putting conditions on outline in respect of landscaping when it should be on the reserve matters. And the case in point being the, the first item uh, before us today. Um, the other aspect with this one is that the it was a hybrid application initially, so we had a full aspect and an outline aspect to the original application, hence why the landscaping condition was in part imposed, but of course it, when it was imposed it applied to the whole thing. So there is a little bit of juggling between what we're dealing with reserve matters, which is landscaping included, but also that what also can be dealt with by planning condition outside of this, and that's also landscaping. So the two have to marry up, but the point we're trying to make is that we are aware of that and we have control still with us in order to make sure that landscaping is put in the appropriate place. Um, further questions on that I will take. Um, just to also point out that this is an allocated site uh, under your uh, Stone Market Area Action Plan Policy uh, 6.20. Um, that means it's a strategic site. It is not subject to SIL. It was picked up, it, all the aspects of the obligations to this site would have been picked up through the 106 agreement, which was with the original hybrid application. So that's all done and dusted and dealt with. So today you are only looking at the reserve matters for this particular part of the site and the uh, 90 dwellings that, that that includes. Thank you. Sorry about that, Councillor Mansell. It might have answered some of your questions, but please do ask your further questions. No, Thank no you. it doesn't actually. Um, I, I have, I have uh, two main um, questions. One is about the Suffolk County Council Highways response, which is summarised on pages 83 and 84 of our papers. Um, and in particular uh, note, um, I was concerned about numbers 5, 6 and 7 at the bottom of page 83 and on the top of page 84 it says that the, um, uh, the, the applicant has responded to the majority of these comments and a further response is awaited from the Highway Authority and will be reported in late papers or at committee 
and I haven't had that uh, report in late papers or committee. So I'd like to ask about those particular points, which were the um, car parking space for plot 630, numbering the car parking spaces for the sheltered bungalows, and um, a footpath link um, off the red line boundary. So that was my first question. Do you want me to deal with that one first, or shall can we go on to the second one? No, 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 no. I'll just wait for a minute, because in actual fact, I picked them up yeah. myself at briefing, so I was expecting also to have a highways update. Do you yeah. Want to yeah, I'm sorry about that, Chair and Councillor. Yeah, I, I, I did um, quite early on send through a, um, an update for the late papers, and I don't know why that hasn't made its way through, where the Highway Authority officer clearly said she had no objection following the submission of the... Of the revised drawing so I'm sorry that didn't make its way through so have you got that by email or something I've, I've got an email which I, I can you know, yeah and I'll yeah. come back to you Councillor Mans um, so the revised drawings picks up on points five and six um, in terms of the uh, footpath beyond the red line site plan in the 106 agreement footpaths were part of that 106 so that that the money to, for those improvements beyond the site was secured via the 106 so that's also covered that way which probably the highways officer wasn't aware of yes i think that's most unfortunate because i've scored out refusal on here and asked for an update so thank you for uh, also bringing it i've got it ready and waiting your next um, point if you would please yeah the, the other point was to do with hedging and trees and the plan that um, the officer put up on the screen uh, about um, putting the landscaping sort of along the southern boundary of the site uh, that I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a bit lost as to whether this is part of the previous application or not but that diagram there shows a nice green strip behind the back gardens of the southernmost housing and you were talking about the hedge along the southern edge of the green space. Now, the plan that we've got in our papers on page 101 doesn't have that green hedge or boundary behind the back gardens of those houses. So I wanted to make sure that the um, hedging or whatever it is that's going along that southern edge also includes the back gardens of the houses on that side. And can I interject again, Councillor? I also had hedging on there in our briefing and we did ask the officer for hedging updates. So at least we're consistent. Thank you very much. Can you just respond to that? Yeah, the, the submitted plan doesn't show that hedging to the south-west aspect. Um, so in my report, I've, I've suggested that it should be put in there. So the rest of it is, or is shown on the submitted drawing, but not that southwestern hedge behind those gardens. But it is going to go all the way along. Well, it, it, the mechanism is discharge of condition. But again, as per the early discussion, an informative can go on decision saying, make sure when you discharge the condition, you put a hedge to the southwest. Councillor Matheson, you had your hand up, please. Thank you. Yeah, I must s start by just clarifying that although the, um, the at the start this is introduced as in the parish of Coombs, I've had a close look at the uh, boundaries of the wards and so on. And although I represent Coombs, um, this land is not within the ward that I now represent. Right. Having said that, um, I was also concerned about this missing bit of landscaping and I've had a discussion with the case officer about that, um, but my concern that remains actually looking, looking at that um, slide 11 as it is, um, is really that, that the, there's no space to put the hedging um, if, you, if you look at slide 11, which is, brings it up in more detail. Councillor Matheson, can you ask the question rather than debate yeah, the, the point? Yeah, well, the question is, are we not going to have to move the houses in order to deliver the hedging, which the officer is reasonably saying um, is, will be required? It would make the gardens more shallow, but there's, there's, there's clearly space to do it. Um, just having discussed that point uh, with my colleague here, uh, I'm more than happy to impose a condition on on this reserve matters. It will be a duplicate to the, essentially what the condition on the hybrid, but I'm, I think it's justified in this case for the missing landscaping to be conditioned. So I'm happy to add that to the recommendation from officers, uh, just to clarify the point, so that the landscaping requirement there will be conditioned. Thank you. And I'm also hearing that the uh, legal officer is, is approving that uh, condition sure going on. That. Thank you for that, Ian. Um, yes, Councillor Mayor? I mean, these are questions only, we're not going to debate it. Yep. 
the, respo the response from NHS England um, states there's insufficient capacity for the growth, and it then has a, um, a recommendation that um, money be placed uh, for the development of the GP um, facilities in the SIL process. Was this covered in the 106 agreement? All, yeah, there isn't SIL, but all of those, all the 106 money matters have been done, outlined. There's, there's nothing, no more discussion to be had on that. Yeah, there's no SIL on this one because it's been done on the 106. Right. Now, these are questions. Councillor Matheson. Yeah, no, uh, uh, has the, the um, I mean, the, the Stone Market Area Action Plan is referred to as, as relevant policy, and, and um, I, I quite agree that's, you know, that is fundamental. This has been allocated, etc. What I was concerned about, though, was that the, and I don't know whether it's in the SAAP somewhere spelled out or not, that's the question, really, is that the, the logic of accepting this as an allocation at the time was that the, the, the traffic would be, would be minimised by including the care home, which would tend to not generate much traffic. And I just wonder whether the, the, new, the latest highways response or the SAAP was expressing any concerns about that because we're now getting um, the so shelter for sale instead. The highways, the highways, was there an increase in traffic? Uh, this, this wasn't brought up as an issue because what you've got is, is um, individual sheltered units rather than a, a care home. So it's, it's a different thing, but it's the same sort of care. And Councillor, Math uh, Councillor Mansell, please. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I can't see any comments uh, in my papers from the Environmental Sustainability Officer, and I just wondered what, whether there were any measures beyond... Um, building regs on environmental sustainability in this development. That also is covered at outline. There's, there's a condition in the outline um, permission, uh, which right. I was looking at a bit earlier. I think, I think Councillor Matheson, you, you got the decision notice, hopefully, Councillor Matheson, did you yesterday, the, from 2016? Did you receive it? Sorry, shouldn't speak straight to him. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going back to an early decision notice. Um, Have you got that in our papers? No, again, apologies. Um, but there was a condition for, yeah, condition 32 of the hybrid permission, um, action required prior to commencement of development, agreement of measures to improve sustainability of development. That, that was covered at the hybrid permission. Right. Okay, so we've, so we've, we've done the questions now, so we now move on um, to... Um, the ward members because there's no one here uh, from the parish council, the objector, supporter, the applicant or the agent and I have a written um, comment from Councillor Brewster. Which is as follows. Apologies, I'm able to, do, to attend Development B um, to speak as ward member. Uh, as I have a meeting in Stansted. I'm grateful to read the following committee member in my absence. Firstly, I'm conscious that this is a reserved matters application and the conditions of the outline permission reference 149215 will apply. The construction design and architectural features in phase one development are to my mind first class. I also have others speak to me with similar thoughts. I note one of the representations speaks of the doctor's surgery, school and road access not supporting the demands of this development will bring. Also that the Ipswich and East Suffolk CCG are requesting SIL funding to support healthcare in the area. I thought SIL wasn't involved in this. <laughs> Sorry, he's not here to answer that. Um, these matters are conditioned in the outline permission with section 106 finance being specifically allocated and ring fence for the Coombs Ford surgery. The surgery are and always have been aware of this and I've spoken to them on several occasions. My only concern would be around my understanding that a bus gate was to be included between the two phases of the estate so that buses could negotiate through the estate but other vehicles would access an egress phase one from Edgecombe Road and phase two from Poplar Hill. While there is some mention in the papers about access to phase two from Poplar Hill, it needs some clarification. However, slide two on page 92 does appear to have a line across the road at the point where the dividing tree belt crosses the estate. I am assuming these services serve the same purpose as I believe Edgecombe Road residents 
would have some concerns about all vehicles going through the road, which would put undue pressure on an already busy Edgecombe Road, often used as a rat run. Apart from some clarification around that concern, I would strongly recommend members approve this application. This is a bungalow estate, the like of which we haven't too many in the district. Many thanks, Gerard. And I think the, um, the comment from the officer and your questioning and my querying that the highways have assessed that might cover some of his points. But that's the ward member's comments. So we are now into debate. Just very quickly, Jeff. Oh, one moment, Councillor Mansell. Sorry, Councillor, just to, just to clarify that we haven't received anything from Councillor Scott, Scott, who is the, also no. the ward member. Right. Thank you. Councillor Mansell. Thank you. Um, the ward member mentioned the bus gate. Can we just have some clarity on whether there is a bus gate or whether it's a through road or what happens at that intersection between the two parts of the development? The, the, the scheme has evolved over time and there are various things that are there early on that aren't there anymore and the, and the bus gate just isn't there anymore. Um, there hasn't been anybody asking for it, so it is, it is not there. So, so is it now a through road that will has the potential for being a rat run? It's my understanding it's a through road, yes. Councillor Humphreys, we're just checking that point, but Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, it's just about doctor surgery. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there's already seal money allocated to the surgery and they've yet to claim it. Oh, 106, sorry. Um, and I have spoken to Councillor Brewster to go and remind the surgery that that money is available. I'd just like confirmation on that. Uh, yes, um, actually there's two lots um, that have been set to one side for the surgery. One was from the Chiltern Lees uh, allocation uh, and the other set has come from the, this allocation, uh, both of which have been put in the good hands of the District Council to hold on to, awaiting any application from the surgery itself. Was that your hand in the air or Councillor Matheson? I think we're, we, we, can go, we can go into debate now, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, well, I must say that, you know, that Councillor Bruce has raised a, a, another point which, which goes back and back um, in terms of talking about the surgery. Now, I seem to remember that I was on the committee that looked at, at what's been described as phase one of this, uh, this development, the other part of the allocation in, in SAAP, and um, that at that time it was, it was determined that the, that the health provision for f the phase one of this was actually going to be at Violet Hill. And it was, it was somewhat ridiculed at the time as, as, as you know, very inappropriate, but that was what was put on the table as the solution to the, the fact there was no room at, at, at Coombs Hall. Now, if the surgery have now discovered they've got space to build or whatever, then that's, that's jolly good. But I, I, you know, there, is a, there is a big mismatch between the, the original ways in which sustainability will be delivered, and the bus gate comes in here as well, as, as some, some concerns still about the, res, you know, the residential home and so on. Um, you know, we're incrementally losing all the, re, all the ways in which we persuaded ourselves that A, this land should be allocated, and B, it should be developed in a particular way. And, and if phase one said bus gate, uh, for, for, you know, for perfectly valid reasons, I seem to recall, um, then, you know, to, if it just sort of be brushed aside, well, it's no longer there, um, not been asked for, I'm not quite sure who's asking for it, if it isn't us as, as the planning authority, and if presumably county highways asked for it at the time, um, you know, I'm I just not, not happy with the way this is going. I mean, yes, we need to build on this, this allocation, but we need to get it right, and I can't quite see it at the moment. There's slightly too many things coming up that aren't good. Councillor Mansell. Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I, uh, I must admit, I, when I looked at this application, I, I thought it's, it's a reserve matters, uh, it is actually for less than the up to figure, which I found quite heartening because we don't very often get developers applying for less than the number that they're 
able to uh, when it comes to reserve matters. Uh, added to that, there are a number of bungalows, and we keep hearing that more and more people do want bungalows. It's also uh, sort of at the top of the hill, so bungalows seem like a good idea because they're not going to obstruct the views of the countryside as much as a two-storey dwelling. But I am a bit concerned about the lack of the bus gate because I too remember the application for the previous part of this development, and there was a lot of concern about traffic running up those, I don't know the names of the roads in Coombsford, but Poplar Hill, um, Poplar Hill is the main road, but the, the Edgecombe Road, I think, is the other one. And there was an awful lot of discussion about cars running all the way down Edgecombe Road instead of Poplar Hill, and Poplar Hill is the sort of... Um, the, the bottleneck, um, and people may well decide to go through Edgecombe Road, which is effectively a very large housing estate. Um, now, I notice on the plan that there is to be a bus stop near where the presumably the potential for the bus gate was to be. So my thinking is that there is going to be a bus from this development into the centre of town, which is very good, uh, especially for the people in the sheltered housing and the, uh, and the like. But I'm a bit concerned about this, the, the traffic that may end up on, on Edgecombe Road. Um, and I am, I am a bit fl flummoxed as to why the request for the bus gate or the, whether it was conditioned or not, where, where has it gone? I mean, it, it seems a bit remiss that we no longer are insisting on it. So uh, much as I like this development, um, and I think it's, it looks good and I, I, I welcome it, I am a bit concerned about the impact of traffic on the Edgecombe Road estate. Thank you for that. I think the Chief Planning Officer can update us on those points. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Chief to me. <laughs> oh, uh, OK. I've, I've had a very quick look at the, the various aspects of this bus gate, and, um, and I was there as well a few years ago, because I, I think I was the case officer. I looked at the outlook... Well, I'll start again. The allocation itself in the uh, area action plan does not require a bus gate, so there's nothing in there. I've looked at the outline planning application. We have not conditioned a bus gate for either the full application, which has already got built, or the outline and this reserve matters we're now dealing with. There's no actual requirement within the conditions of that outline permission. Just to double check, I've also looked at the highway responses for the original uh, 2015 16 application. There is no request in that response from the Highways Authority with regard to a bus gate requirement and we have nothing in terms of the current scheme for a request from the Highways Authority for a bus gate requirement. So I have nothing from our partners in respect to the experts on the highway impacts of this development to require a bus gate nor has there been any policy requirement for that to come forward. That is the position that we are in to present to yourselves. Can I just ask a question myself on that then? If members, um, clearly members are unhappy that from what we've heard at the moment, but if they were minded to refuse, how would that stack up? Uh, I would, well, certainly I wouldn't support that. I no, think it would be but, but very just, unreasonable I'm in policy grounds, the, but I would perhaps ask that we have an opportunity to take that away and, yes. and, and come back uh, to discuss that point further with our highways colleagues the applicant and to consider uh, the data in terms of traffic flow further if we needed to do that. But uh, Well, we need the debate to go on but, further, but yeah. I'm just sort of putting it in people's minds so that we can look to either go for a deferral or something to, um, on that basis. But I'm, I'm not um, uh, usurping the debate, which must go ahead further. So um, uh, I think Councillor Humphreys wanted to speak. I'm sure, thank you. Uh, I know the area really well. And I've been using those routes to go to work for 17 years. There's never been a bottleneck at Edgecombe Road. There's never been a bottleneck on Poplar Hill. And I go all times of day. Um, and you can, you can smirk all your light. This is factual. Um, when we come back and we decide to go down Edgecombe Road, it's because you want to go to Great Fimbria or the Coombs Lane or the other side of Stone Market to avoid the town. So some people choose to do that. Some people go down Poplar Hill. Uh, and again, there are no bottlenecks. If you look at the layout of the estate, the planned estate, that would serve no additional benefit as a rat run to get anywhere quickly because you go out of town to come back in. So I don't see this is going to be a rat run. I also consider the, the amount of traffic you're going to get in there. What sort of housing are we looking at? We're looking yeah. at sheltered 
homes. We're looking at bungalows. What type of traffic increase do you think there's going to be? Mobility, scooters, pedestrians, you know, the occasional car. But it's not going to be a rat run. Just looking at it, clearly, from space, it's obvious. And, and like I say, the evidence of me walking, or driving back into the work for 17 years, never having a bottleneck on, on Poplar Hill or Edgecombe Road, I think actually we're going down a rabbit hole. Anyone else wish to speak, Councillor Matheson? Yeah, well, I have to say, also being familiar with Poplar Hill for a lot of years, it, is, it has been deliberately constructed with traffic calming, which requires alternate working by vehicles. That is, 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 is it has been created to deliberately be a bottleneck with a 20 mile an hour advisory, I think it is speed limit on it, with signs, uh, and as I say, several um, blockages and, and cut throughs for, for, for cyclists going down the hill. And as I say, those, block, those cut throughs for cyclists create deliberately create, engineer alternate working. So cars have to wait while other cars come up or vice versa. Um, I, I can't see that there is any, not a bottleneck. It has been created to be a bottleneck. Uh, Councillor Humphreys, yeah, I, th I think we need to sort of, <laughs> rather than bat and ball all the time, but obviously... Yeah, clearly... Chair, just come back on that yeah, and just to move do. this along. Um, define a bottleneck would be my first comment. Um, the fact that you've got to wait for another car to pass is not a bottleneck. Um, you're right about the traffic calm procedures is one point where you actually have to slow and allow the traffic to come up, other than that, speed bumps, and there's adequate cycle access as well. But getting back to the main point, which is this development, I see no issues with this development at all. Um, it's reasonable in size. It's the right type of housing that we require in Stowe Market, which is a growing and evolving town, providing sheltered housing, which is important, and bungalows, which is important. It does not create a... Uh, a um, bottle, uh, sorry, a rat run due to the fact you get no advantage by going down it. And I think the density of traffic, given the nature of the housing there, would be adequate for the roads that are in place. Uh, I can't see any reason to refuse this application at all. So I'm minded to approve. Thank you to that, Councillor Humphreys. Just looking at um, and listening to the debate, um, on page 101, we've got um, the um, example of what's happening. At the moment, you're saying there's one raised area, but looking to this, there's going to be two, two more raised areas to slow the traffic. So um, I think that's comfortable. Um, I think it is disappointing, as you say, that we don't get the highways updates as, as readily as we should. I quite agree with you all on that. Um, and I did ask for them. Um, but I just cannot be any more excited that we've got bungalows and, and who they're for. And I really think that we should um, move on with this application. I, I just think it's so exciting. That's what people have been calling for. So that's my view on it so far. So if anyone else wishes to speak or comment. Councillor Matheson. Yeah, I'm going to propose deferral. Um, I think we should sort out. I think, you know, it's, it's absolutely yes. I agree with what's being proposed, uh, but we have to get it right. Um, and this is the opportunity to get it right. And once it's built, it's too late to, to go back and, and sort it out afterwards. So I propose deferral to sort those matters out. Well, I don't like to be awkward, but I'll propose I'll second the motion of uh, approval. So, he did propose. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I got it from my ear this way. So I beg your pardon. So sorry about that. So we have we have two for do it. So hang on, Councillor Mansell, your turn, please. Um, I was going to second Councillor Matheson's proposal. Um, I mean, much as I, I'm not as familiar with the area as either Councillor Humphreys or Councillor Matheson, I do remember there being a lot of concern about cars driving through Edgecombe Road at the previous debate, and I am just sorry that this hasn't been mentioned in the papers um, today. I haven't had time myself to go and look at the uh, minutes of that meeting or the decision notice um, 
from the previous meeting, um, and, and that's why I would like to go away and look at those things and see what was said and what was discussed then. Um, I certainly remember a lot of um, unhappiness about the prospects of traffic go, running through Edgecombe Road. So I have a proposal for deferral and a second of the deferral. So can those just, in... Can we just clarify, Chair, which, what the... If John's... We've got the reasons why we're deferring. Just I've just got down uh, to explore... Sorry. Uh, I, I, as, as far as the deferral reason is concerned, is, is for us to explore the possibility of a bus gate or to check that the bus gate wasn't required. Was that, that, that simply is it? Was that the only reason? Well, I, I, mean, I think if, if, if... Well, hang on. We need it from the second... Of, from the, oh, you're the proposer, aren't you? You're the proposer. I do beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I'm getting in not the all, Not at all. It's like no, a I double mean, I act think up if, there. If, <laughs> if, we're going to, if we're going to take the opportunity, then I, I certainly think I'd like to see a, a revised um, landscaping uh, drawing uh, as well, uh, given, what we've dis given what we've discussed... Um, Thus far, we might as well have it an approval based on based on uh, on a drawing. Council yeah, Councillor uh, Council Humphreys. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Point of order, really. That's not what you proposed. So you've changed it. It was a, no stop. It was about <laughs> it was about traffic. Now it's about landscaping. You changed your proposal, and I just don't get this. And you didn't have a clear proposal because you just come at something else. It was about the traffic through the estate. That's what it was about. The second day confirmed it with Edgecombe Road. It had nothing to do with landscaping. I think, actually, the proposal's flawed because it's a different proposal. Can I just interrupt there, Councillor Humphreys? Um, the planning officer had said that we will add a condition for hedging, so there is no need to put anything on regarding landscaping. So um, that was already included in the proposal from the, fl from the thing here. So can I have a legal well, advice, well, please, rather than playing bat and ball with well, everybody? Madam Chair, simply that the, we haven't voted yet. The proposer and seconder need, need to be clear in agreement as to why they um, believe it should be deferred. And I think we just make sure we all understand that before we vote yes councillor matheson and then yeah and all, then... all i all i said was that that we we might take the opportunity to to approve on the basis of a correct landscaping drawing um that that wasn't actually part of the reasons for deferral i was just saying there was an opportunity there which, which i would like the officer to take if we agree deferral what I'm hearing, Madam Chair, is that the proposer and seconder are wish, wish for the item to be deferred because of the busgate highways uh, traffic point that, that we, they, uh, they um, enunciated. And it was an, a comment by Councillor Matheson that if we did defer, perhaps an opportunity could be taken informally to check landscape plans. If that, so landscaping isn't a formal reason for deferral in your proposal. Can, can Councillor Matheson confirm that, please, what's just been yes, said by the yeah, legal officer? Yeah, interpretation, thank and, you. And the seconder, you're happy with yeah. that as well, right. So on that basis. Sorry. Unless anyone wishes to speak. I was going to say, does anybody else wish to speak at this moment? So if you'd like to take a vote, all those in favour of deferment, please vote. One, two, three. And those against? One, two, three, four. Is that five, Mr. Carmichael? Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry, I didn't see. So that fails. Um, so can we move on then, please? Councillor Humphreys? Madam Chair, I'd like to um, propose approval of the recommendations as laid out in the paper. Yes. The landscaping one, that the hedging that was brought up about 20 minutes ago when the officer... Sorry? Um, and Councillor Gould. Yes, I'd like to second that. Thank you very much. So we know that we are clear with the recommendation on page 90 with the addition of condition for hedging. So all those in favour, please vote. One, two, three, four, five. And those against... Thank you very much. So that's passed. Can we have a 10, 15, well, 10 minute break, please? And then we can crack on. And thank you very much.
Are we? Sorry. Are we? We're now back on live stream. Are we? Uh, Madam Chairman, I've, Mr. Carl Michael and I have had a quick word with the next speaker. Um, uh, Mrs. Jane Storey. Um, as members are aware, Mrs. Storey happens to be a county councillor and, and indeed a former district councillor on this council, but we've just clarified that um, because this, this council, Mid Suffolk, doesn't, nor doesn't normally allow county councillors to speak, but we've clarified Mrs. Storey is speaking as a supporter, which means, and, and she fulfills the usual definition of a supporter, we apply in common sense terms of a person from the community who is in favour of the application and wishes to speak. And I understand she will make it clear she has come in that capacity. And the fact that she is a, a county councillor, the county councillor, is coincidental and should have no relevance in uh, the weight that members will attach to what she says. That's very clear and helpful. Thank you very much indeed. So we now move on to uh, page 165, um, which is the application um, in Elmswell and Woolpit. And it's an outline planning application. And so good morning to you, Alex, if you'd like to present your case. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, members, uh, this is item number 7C in your papers. It refers to application reference DC 1901248, okay. land east of Sharps Row in Woolpit. The application seeks outline planning commission with all matters reserved, save for access, for the erection of a new dwelling. Uh, associated annex and curtilage buildings on uh, on the site. Uh, this is a uh, site location uh, within the district, just so we're clear where the site is, circled in blue there. And then uh, uh, within the parish, so um, detracted somewhat from the village, um, moreover Woolpit Heathway. Uh, the application lies outside of the settlement boundary, some 525 metres, I measure it as, outside the boundary. And it's just over a kilometre from the village centre. Here's the site location plan. And the large uh, finger um, coming away from the site uh, to Heath Road is uh, Sharp's. Sharps Row, uh, which is an unadopted private highway. So that's the reason for the uh, red line extending away from the site in that way. And this is an aerial view of the site. And a close-up of the site area we're talking about here. Apologies, not outlined in red, but uh, this is the general area here. And the, uh, the site at present is used for the sitting, storage and maintenance of vehicles and associated with a temporary planning permission, which was granted by committee in June 2017. And I refer members to paragraphs 2.1 to 2.4 of the officer report in this respect. Here's the uh, indicative uh, site layout and block plan and a 3D image provided with the application. And uh, just to uh, make clear that uh, all matters are reserved apart from access, but this gives an idea of uh, what could be achieved on the site. And the uh, design concept is the um, uh, provision of buildings in a, in a formal, um, uh, traditional Suffolk uh, barn character. So we have um, new dwelling here, uh, proposed annex building here, and cart lodges extending away. And this is an existing building on the site uh, used for the uh, maintenance of vehicles, and that's proposed to be retained in the indicative plans. Here's floor plans again of the uh, dwelling, uh, indicative at present, but it shows a two-story, three-bedroom dwelling. And again, the proposed annex building, this will be one bedroom. This is an aerial photograph of the site provided by the applicant. And this is the, the top of Sharps Road, junction with uh, Heath Road. And we can see here the uh, dwelling at the top of the road, that is Monkey Puzzle House. And you just might be able to see there a 
footpath and uh, cycleway that extends all the way from uh, from Woolpit Heath to the centre of the village, um, although one would have to cross the road uh, to get to the other half of the footpath uh, in this location. So moving down um, Sharps Row, um, it's, uh, as I've said before, an adopted um, highway, private road. And uh, these are the, uh, the neighboring, uh, row of neighboring cottages uh, on the right. So coming to the end of Sharps Row, I'm in the location of the uh, means of access to the site, just turning back and looking back along Sharps Row, along the frontages of the neighbouring dwellings. And this shows the uh, relationship between uh, the site access, which is here, and the neighbouring access. Just another view of that there. Then moving into the site, we have a uh, former agricultural building here, old Nissan Hut. And then another former agricultural building, which has been turned into the, uh, the maintenance workshop in relation to the existing temporary use. And then some of the uh, vehicles in relation to the existing temporary use there. So another view there. And then looking back through the site to the neighboring dwellings. And some further photographs of the site integral. Thank you. Um, in terms of updates, there is an item in the table papers relating to a, um, an application which was refused under officer delegated authority along Sharps Row at, um, at Bonnie Cottage. And um, apart from that, no, no other updates and uh, officer recommendation for approval as per the papers. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Can you just go and show us um, Bonnie Cottage and where the application was refused in relation to the site, please? Sorry, this is the site location plan provided with that uh, application and the reference uh, is for you there. Um, so it would be in this location here and the site we're talking about is here. Um, Reasons for refusal are in the table papers. Uh, yeah. And, and on that map there, can you just show us um, just clearly where the site is for the proposal that we have before us today? Just by those buildings, is it? Uh, for, yes, for it's, uh, it's just up there. Here. So that's just, the. Yeah, yeah, up, yeah, up on yeah, that map. Yeah, 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 thank yes. you. Thank you for that. Does anyone else have any questions for the officer? No? Thank you very much. Um, we don't have the parish council present, but we have Kate Beer, who's an objector. If you'd like to come forward, please, down to one of these, um, the, one on the, the one on the end, and then when you sit down, and then we have the magical three-minute timer, and you press your button and off you go. I'm here to speak about the... Um, on behalf of two of the three cottages in Sharps Row. We have lived down this unmade dirt track for over 12 years, and in that time, the amount of traffic has increased dramatically, especially in the last two years, since Mr. Stuart Bass, the applicant's son, has been using the site in question for servicing and repair of vehicles. Sharps Row is a single lane, unadopted dirt track. You cannot see the first cottage from Heath Road as you enter. There is no passing space and no circle. If vehicles meet then the ones attempting to exit the lane have to reverse back to their own driveways, or the other vehicle feels pressure to illegally back out into Heath Road onto a blind bend. Tricky enough for cars, but a truck towing a trailer causes all sorts of issues. In the design and access statement 4.4, the applicants have referred to a report from the LHA office from March 27, 2017, which concluded that the proposal would not have any severe impact on the highway network in terms of volume of vehicles and highway safety. This is over two years out of date and does not reflect the huge increase in vehicle movements that Mr Bass has generated. It does not consider the very dangerous exit from Sharps Row, which is insane if forced to back out. No further permission should be given until this has been properly looked into. 6.13, it is said that the, vehicle, the type of vehicles using the site will not change, i.e. private and personal vehicles only. 
as these are regularly large cars or vans or lorries, it isn't reassuring in the slightest. As for overshadowing any existing neighbouring amenity, all three cottages are right on the lane, and so every time one of these large vehicles goes past our homes, within two feet of the windows, the rooms are plunged into darkness. In one room, we've had to keep the curtains permanently closed for our privacy. Since January this year, I have made a log of Mr Bass's vehicle movements up and down the lane. In five months, he has averaged eight movements a day, the most being 18 in one day. Almost every day includes his transit van, which blocks the light, and 75% of the days include lorries and or his car transporter. I welcome the comments from Andy Rutson Edwards, where he asked for conditions to be imposed so that the existing residential immunity, such as it is, is not further disturbed. When Mrs Beedman was granted permission in 2017 for her son to carry out his car servicing and repair, it was suggested that he use a second access to the site from Warren Lane, and I am aware that there have been a few times that he has done so. In order for this development to go ahead, could they not use this access instead? This totally changes the situation, as the reason for our objections is solely the access. Warren Lane is a proper road maintained by the Council, which can cope with the amount of traffic this site generates. Sharps Row made sense 100 years ago for three carless cottages and access to farm buildings and land for a tractor or two. It is totally unsuitable for even its current traffic movements, so permission should only be granted if access is from Warren Lane. Thank you. Thank you for that. Does anyone have any questions for Ms Spear? <coughs> thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to return to your seat, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. Um, you have heard the, uh, the outline case from uh, your planning officer. There are just a few points that I would like to um, reinforce, perhaps, that um, have been said. Sharps Row is a very narrow driveway. Uh, it is a, a narrow road, a lane. Um, it, as uh, Mrs Beer has said, it, it was, uh, you know, 100 years ago, it was probably quite suitable. At the moment, it is narrow. Um, it, it's, going to, it's probably going to stay narrow. But the, uh, it hasn't got any narrower since any of the occupants moved in. The uh, access is, uh, as you have seen from the photographs, it, is, it does not give the local highway authority any, uh, any concern. And uh, I would suggest that um, the... Uh, other planning application for Bonnie Cottage was um, very much um, of a different perspective. The um, existing planning application uh, that um, the existing planning permission, which is for Mr. Stuart Bass personally, the uh, conditions have been complied with. And I would say uh, that perhaps if uh, there were uh, living accommodation at the top of Sharps Row, that actually the vehicle movements would probably be a lot less because he'd have, he wouldn't be having to go backwards and forwards. Um, with regards to Sharps Row, actually it is a, 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 a more or less a, a, a farm access. Um, there are three, at least three farmers that actually could be using that uh, particular road 24-7. Um, effectively um, for their farm vehicles so it could be that there are heavy tractors going up there as as well as every other vehicle so I, I, I'm not sure that that is a particular um, uh, objection for for this particular planning application um, conversion of farm buildings and I know there is a, a mixture here of a conversion of a farm building uh, taking one down and, and um, putting one up and also adding one um, was in the um, in the original MPPF and I would suggest that um, the applicants um, 
would be, uh, in, in part anyway, at least uh, ma maintaining that and providing a sustainable accommodation for them and their son. They, in doing so, they would free up a, a, a three-bedroom cottage, uh, sorry, three-bedroom house in the village for other people to use. And uh, just to say that the applicants have uh, contributed to the maintenance of the unadopted road. So that it's not that they're using it without contributing um, money towards the upkeep of it. Can you finish now, please? Yes, certainly. Um, it is close to a footpath that leads to the village centre and I believe it is sustainable and I fully support this application. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. Just a question on the, the farm traffic. Can you confirm that tractors are using that access for the fields which lie just to the north of the uh, cottage area at, at presently? Uh, yes, there's uh, tractors that would be using the, uh, the, the, the road to go uh, past where the uh, where the applicant site is but also there is a farm to the north of Sharps Row. Um, you can see the, the the farm buildings, I believe, on, on one of the maps. But um, there is a, a farm to the north uh, and tractors and other agricultural machinery would be used on that. That's a pig, or they were pig farmers, um, I, I know, because they had pigs on my land. Right, thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to return to your seat. We now have Ben Elvin, um, the applicant, the agent, sorry. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Good morning, members, and thank you for the opportunity to address you today on this proposal. The applicants are local people, and they're already resident in Woolpit, as you've heard, and I hope you've all had the opportunity to read the personal statement that they put with the application, which sets out their reasons for wanting to build their own home here. Mr and Mrs Beedman are people with a long association with the village, a family that's worked on the land, and worked, uh, and, sorry, and has deep-set roots in the community. The opportunity to build their own home here gives them the ability to remain here in the long term, and to live side by side with their son and his family, delivering the care that he needs whilst retaining independence. The report from your officer recognises the sustainability of the site and the absence of harm resulting from the proposal. It is noted there are no objections from the Highway Authority, nor from the Land Contamination Officer, and that the Environment and Health Team and the Arboriculture Officer also raise no objections. But that does not tell all the story. The proposal also doesn't give rise to any concerns with listed buildings or heritage assets, is not at risk of flood. It has also been found to be acceptable in terms of biodiversity and ecology and to be acceptable in terms of the impacts on amenity. A number of letters of support have been received from the community and we understand, as you've heard, that Jane is here to speak in support of the, the proposal also as a, as a member of the community. The proposal would see the tidying up of the site and the renovation of one of the buildings on the land. The applicant's son continues to work on his vehicles on the site and members who were on the committee at the time that that application was brought before them will recall that that application is personal to him and does not permit him to carry and, and yes and does not permit him to carry out commercial work and I can confirm that following complaints made approximately six months ago the enforcement team have been out and consider that the conditions are being complied with as Jane has confirmed. Commentary is made by objectors relating to the recent refusal of permission at the site next to this which is known as Bonnie Cottage. The proposals are not similar. The proposal at Bonnie Cottage was for a new dwelling at the rear end of their garden, away from Sharps Row, contrary to the pattern of development and sited in a backland location. It was refused only for those reasons, and those same reasons simply do not exist in this case. There were no highway grounds for refusal of that application. The conclusion to your officer's report identifies a number of the key points in this case, and I would like to conclude by covering these. Your officer finds that the site is in a sustainable location with access to a full range of services and facilities, which the occupants would in turn support. It would not result in social isolation and would contribute positively to the existing community and I would add to their own way of life. The proposal would deliver an additional dwelling in support of the housing supply and would result in a significant amount of additional landscape planting and increased ecological opportunities. There will be short term economic benefits during the construction phase of development and, it, and the conclusion finds that it's a sustainable development when assessed against the provisions of the MPPF taken as a whole. 
For all of these reasons, I ask that you enable this family to build their own home on this site and secure their life in the village that they have become a long-term part of. Granting planning permission here will secure so much benefit, and I thank you for your time and allowing me to address you this morning. Thank you for that. Do you have any questions for Mr Alvin? I've just got one, um, probably. Um, it's not in the site, but who owns the access lane on the bottom to Warren Lane? Angling Water. All oh, right, that's helpful. Um, and thank you for pointing out the, um, the differences of the Bonnie Cottage, which is what was mentioned in the report, which is why we got the late papers, and it quite clearly shows us out there. However, um, a comment was made earlier, and I don't know quite how it's um, got to, to this stage, but you've quite clearly said that it's not used for commercial use. Can you absolutely say that 18 movements a day, if that has happened, that would not be for commercial use? I, my, my clients will happily confirm that, absolutely. He, he, he has particular needs in terms of his, his capacity, his mental capacity, etc., that require him, in some respects, to have a hobby, and that, and that is what he does. Oh. Members of the committee who were here before heard long from Mrs Beeman on that topic at the time and were satisfied to the effect that they granted that permission on that basis, no commercial activity, and personal to Mr Bass, and it has a time limit upon it, such that if he's no longer there, or if the um, permission runs to that point in time, it, it should cease. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Thank you if you'd like to return to your seat, thank you. Um, we now have Councillor Mansell. If you'd like to speak as Ward Member, please. Uh, thank you. Um, now, uh, I, um, I was first, uh, um, this application was first brought to my attention uh, fairly shortly after I got elected to be the member for Woolpit um, because I wasn't the member for Woolpit before and in fact uh, this application was called to committee by the previous member for Woolpit um, and I saw no reason to um, change that request or go against that request um, and uh, you know Although this application is for one dwelling and an annex at the end of a lane, um, at first glance you think it's one dwelling and it should be fairly straightforward, but I'm not convinced that it is as straightforward as it first appears to be. Um, there is an interesting previous planning history. Um, when I first looked at the site, I thought perhaps it's a brownfield site, but um, it does categorically say in the papers that it is considered to be a greenfield agricultural site that is going to be developed. Um, the unmade road, which you've heard a lot about, um, which serves the three existing cottages and the um, hobby workshop um, on the site, uh, I understand is in no one's ownership, which I find quite interesting. Um, in modern society that nobody seems to own that, that particular lane, uh, but everyone has a right of access over it. I'm not quite sure um, how that works legally. Um, and the existing dwellings are right adjacent to that dirt track, that um, un unadopted private um, roadway which no one seems to own. Um, and I think that, unfortunately, the previous applications on this site have caused um, friction between the existing residents of, of uh, Sharps Row and the applicant's family. Um, with reference to the Bonnie Cottage development, which was recently refused, um, um, you know, thank you very much to the agent for pointing that out. It was in a field quite well separated from the other development, and, and this one isn't the same. Um, it, you know, the Bonnie Cottage development is, it was in a very different location to this one. Um, and, I mean, the main, the main concerns of the, um, of the objectors are to do with the traffic along, along Sharps Row. Now, the, where, the, where Sharps Row joins the public highway, it doesn't have particularly good visibility. Um, we saw a photograph with um, part of the cycleway there and the cycleway actually crosses the road there and it is it's not a good place to cross the road. So yes, reversing um, vehicles that are towing uh, will cause issues at that particular junction. But unfortunately, highways have made no comments. Um, and this is for one um, dwelling. Uh, there are, if there are already 18 movements a day on this lane, 
um, one more dwelling may be considered to be less significant. I think the significant traffic comes from the existing permission, which has already got, got permission, albeit it's only temporary permission, and it, I believe, is due to expire next year. Um, now, the planning officer does refer to there being an impact on the neighbouring properties in the report at point 13.2, uh, and he feels that on balance, um, the benefit of having another dwelling uh, does outweigh any negative, um, you know, dis disbenefits um, of putting another dwelling here. Um, but please bear in mind that this is only one new dwelling out of the 550-odd per year that Mid Suffolk need. Um, I too was a bit confused about the reference to the Warren Lane access. Um, I wasn't at the previous committee and I wasn't the ward member for Woolpit at that time um, because I couldn't quite work out how the access was going to get from Warren Lane um, and I wasn't sure if it was in the same ownership um, and maybe that's why it had been um, proposed. Um, so I, I think this is actually quite a difficult um, decision to make. And perhaps in some respects, I'm quite glad I'm sitting this side of the table um, because there, there are current issues, but I think those issues are to do with the existing permission and not what we're here to consider today. Uh, what we're here to consider today is whether we can knock down one building, um, build a house and an annex um, on a site at the end of a dirt track, um, which is one way and has no passing places, and exits onto the public highway at a junction where there is poor visibility and cycles crossing. Um, so um, I'll leave it over to you to discuss, but um, it's not as straightforward as you might first think. Thank you. Do members have any questions for Councillor Mansell? Councillor Humphreys and then Councillor Matheson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a question to the ward member, but one that might be answered by the officers. Um, you said that um, it wasn't a brownfield site. My understanding of brownfield site is there's a previously developed area that is now being used for redevelopment. Is that correct? Yeah, actually, this is a tiny bit more complicated than actually it should be. <laughs> uh, how do we explain it in simple terms? Um, so prior to 2017, uh, the, the application for the workshop building, it was an agricultural site. Mm. We granted then permission for the uh, use of the workshop for the maintenance activities and whatever land associated with the red line plan at that time, and despite the fact that it's temporary permission, the change of use was granted, which means that it is technically previously used land in the context of our definition. So at this time, at the time of the termination of this application, we are dealing with a site that is previously used land, former agricultural land. If the application was let to expire, which is going to expire on the 23rd of June 2020, it would revert back to being agricultural land and by the definition of the NPPF would become Greenfield again. But at this moment in time, it's not that. So despite that nothing physically is changing on the site whatsoever, <laughs> the status in legal terms, if I put it that way, or in terms of the NPPF uh, definition, has changed due to the use that we've granted uh, a year or two ago. Um, so for the purposes of members, right now, this is previously developed land under the definition of the MPPF. That is the basis to, to which to determine this application. That's very helpful. Councillor Matheson, did you have a question along this Yes. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask um, Councillor Mansell, um, you, you, know, you, you commented on, on, well, it's a house and an annex. Um, you didn't actually comment on the, the quite num large number of um, cart lodges, I think they're described as, um, which are, are also new build rather than conversion of the current building. Thank you. I, I must admit, I was a little confused when I first looked at the application as to what was staying and what was um, going, because I think there's one building going to be removed, 
Can I just interrupt you? Can, but can we get, can we get the, can scene, clarify the scene that. up and you don't mind being yeah. taken offline? But then talk as you as it goes up for us. Can, have you got a bigger um, chart than that? Sorry, thank you. Uh, two existing buildings, um, both former agricultural buildings. This is the building that's currently in use for the, um, the hobby use, uh, which has previously been granted. Uh, this is a, another building uh, which is going, um, and uh, that is a former Nissan Hurt, which I don't believe has any uh, existing use, a former agricultural use. Um, I don't know if we can get to the indicative layout and plans. So uh, here uh, we can see the, the Nissan hut building will go. And this building here is the existing, what's being used as the, the maintenance building. That's shown to be retained and uh, improved and that will form part of the, uh, the buildings as indicated. Although, please bear in mind, this is indicative layout only, and we are just dealing with an outline application at the moment. Well, well, to the I was just gonna, going to say that I think that the cart, I, 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 must, I, I think that the, it looks from the diagram that the cart lodges are, are sort of replacing one of the existing buildings um, on the plan. Um, but there might be another one as well. But what I meant in terms of it being one dwelling in an annex, it's, it's effectively one family who are going to be living there, um, and presumably the annex will be an annex and be ancillary to the uh, enjoyment of the amenity of the dwelling and not a separate dwelling. Can I just uh, come in on this point? Uh, this is uh, an outline application uh, with access only. So the indicative... Could you... Uh, well, I don't know if you can put the indicative plan back up at the same time as streaming. So ultimately, we have the workshop building, which is the one where the pointer is hovering over at the moment. Is Alex, if that's that's the workshop building. Uh, yes, sorry. Yes. Workshop yep, building. that's the bit. So that's the bit we're retaining. Everything else is being demolished. Well, uh, the one additional building, the uh, Nissan Hurt, which is in the general location of this building, but uh, on the indicative plans, um, it's quite clearly a new building, so that's what they're... Okay, in but in terms of the plans for what that looks like and layout and scale and so on, that's all reserved matters? That's correct. Right, and that includes the house and its size and scale. So ultimately, at reserved matters, we could have a one-bedroom bungalow turn up or it could be a five bedroom two story building we don't know that at this stage this is an indicative idea they might go forward on this basis but in terms of what is known we have a red line around the plan and we know the retention of the buildings that are being retained that's essentially it can we put a restriction on what might be applicable allowable at this stage because we've fallen into that trap before it Right, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's another question. Yeah, the the um, re really, it's I think it, it follows from 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 what the uh, planning manager just just said. Really, I, I was just looking at what the the what we is applied for, um, and it says and outbuildings. Um, where does that sit in what you just said about um, its only outline for? A, a house and an annex. Well, a garden shed is an outbuilding, ultimately. Um, so, uh, if we, ha we have many applications, you know, 100 houses applications, and when they come forward with the reserve matters, they may well in indicate what outbuildings, and that may well be a, bicycle, a cycle store or, or outbuilding that has a garden shed. Outbuildings will be part and parcel of what we consider reserve matters and whether the size of those outbuildings, whatever size they may be, are appropriate for the locality and that can be judged at reserve matter stage in terms of their scale uh, and design. Uh, no, oh, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, the use of the outbuildings, um, 
are, in my way of looking at this here, we're retaining the workshop in terms of the uh, non-commercial use regarding the maintenance building. Any outbuildings, correct me if I'm wrong, would be ancillary in association with the domestic use of the dwelling. Is that correct? Um, well, in, in terms of the, uh, um, the workshop building, we are dealing with the temporary permission. Um, it's not proposed as part of this application uh, to retain that temporary use by way of this uh, application. Um, so, from my understanding, any of the outbuildings would have to be for the uses ancillary and incidental to the use. Yeah. So, ancillary to the domestic, not to the workshop. Can we be clear on that? Yes. So, we need to be clear on that. Mm. Well, I think we can put that in as a, as a condition if, if the debate goes forward on that. Thank you for that, Councillor. Right. Um, we, I think we're done with that. And oh, Well, thank you very much, Councillor Mansell. Um, we don't have any further response from Councillor Geek. So, we are now into debate. Would like to start us off because I don't like to start leading from the chair I can do that easily but I don't think it's appropriate uh, I think actually Councillor Humphreys had his hand up sorry Councillor Matheson that's a shame I was going to allow you to go first that's oh, John okay. but yeah if you want to um, so looking at this um, it's a brownfield site so straight away I'm thinking well this is good we're going to tidy up the brownfield site and we're going to put something pleasant on there that actually fulfills the needs of the people that are living there and that's quite an important aspect to it um, when we look at the, the, um, the movement up and down the lane, and although I accept the fact that you've recorded eight a day or 18 being a maximum, the fact is, I don't know if that's the agricultural vehicles that you spoke about for access back into... It doesn't matter. No, 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 I'm sorry. We don't, we don't need... Do, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm reading what I see. It uh, doesn't matter. I'm reading what I see, and I'm listening to what I hear from both parties, and this is my assumption. So that's, that's it. Um, so, I don't know if there's going to be any extra traffic or not. And on a lane, and there are plenty of lanes in Suffolk, it's one of the beauties of living in Suffolk, we have a thing called etiquette. When a vehicle is in your way, you move to one side, reverse or whatever, and that's normal practice. So I don't see any difference with this. Um, the indicative plan, um, they didn't just throw some buildings on a map and go, oh, this looks like a good indicative plan. They probably put some thought behind it as the eventual plan that's going to be there. So I'd like to see, or feel rather, that that's pretty appropriate for that size of ground, and it looks right. It looks like rural Suffolk. It's fantastic. So I've got no issues with the design uh, side of it either. Um, there's no commercial work, which is fine. Nothing's changed. Uh, it's a private road. Highways don't object, even though people have talked about access onto roads. The Warren Lane uh, side of it as well. Um, the problem with Warren Lane is the guy that lives on this building, on this, this on this site has to go across tracks. Well, that's not appropriate for the type of vehicles he's got, so that's a little bit unfair. So the Warren Lane, I'd, I'd scrap out, to be honest with you. Um, I just don't see anything wrong with it. It's an outline planning. It's on a brownfield site. It's appropriate for its size. It's appropriate for its use. It's appropriate for the family that are going to live there. We need to consider that massively. Like I said, it probably frees up a house in Woolpit. That's to be confirmed. Um, I just don't see anything wrong with this plan. Well, I'm moved for approval, but uh, I'll listen to debate. Thank you. Councillor Matheson? Yeah, I was just going to remind ourselves, really, that the, um, the identity of the applicant, etc., are, are not material considerations. And um, I think that that has to be taken out of quite a lot of what has been said um, by various parties in support, um, which just makes it more difficult, actually. I'm not saying that. I, I, I think it, it's not easy at all. Um, it's, it's, one of the, it's a difficult end of difficult, which is why we have a committee. <laughs> um, just as a point of, of it there, um, the workshop was for specifically this family. So um, I think that is conditioned into the um, application, isn't it? Yeah. So um, does anybody? Yes, Councillor Norris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just ask for some clarification, please. In the conditions on page one seven four, it mentions 
in the middle, annex occupation restriction. Uh, could the officer expand on that a little? Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, what I'm suggesting is our standard uh, annex occupation uh, condition, which would link the uh, proposed annex building to the host dwelling, to have that as one household and to ensure it's not going to become a separate dwelling in the countryside. That's basically what that's um, Just as an extra comment, you may have heard uh, that it, I mentioned I used to live there many years ago. I used to live at the cottage. Um, and it was very worrying living opposite what was then a pig farm. Um, and I used to regularly paint the front of my house and get it completely splattered with mud. Um, but that's not a planning issue. Um, but the lane was in an appalling state many, many years ago. Um, indeed, there were at that time tractors going down there, but not the traffic that allegedly is going down there now. Um, the houses are slap bang on the road, so I have every sympathy with the um, objectors to this. Um, but it is a very difficult one because, as we've been told, it's a brownfield site. Um, I'm a bit worried about the potential for vehicles to increase, um, but I'm not sure how many... Um, it was said earlier on, I think um, Mr Elvin said, servicing and repairing vehicles. Um, and I'm just a bit curious if it's not commercial, how many private vehicles you service and repair. Um, but having said that, it does tick many of the boxes um, that our NPPF and planning guidance tells us. So it's a real difficult one because I did have a lot of difficulty living there myself, knowing all the vehicles that were coming and going. And I, I do have sympathy when you live opposite something like that and this is now moving down the road. So that's my comments on it, that I am thinking about it. Thank you. So does somebody want to move this along and um, either propose one way or t'other? I think Councillor Humphreys did, did you earlier? Did you say you, no? Oh, okay. Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, having listened to the debate, um, seen the facts in front of us, um, I move uh, for approval, so proposed uh, approval of this recommendation as set. Do I have a seconder for it? Councillor Norris? Yes, thank you. I'm happy to approve. Thank you. Uh, uh, support. Thank you. So we have a proposer and a seconder with the recommendations on page 174. All those in favour, please vote. So that is carried. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So we move on now to the last application for this morning. And that's on page 203. Are you presenting this, Alex? I am. Oh, right. Off we go again. Off we go. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, members, this is item 7D in your papers. Um, 
application reference DC 19 0061. It's land at uh, the roundabout junction of the A140 and A143, uh, commonly referred to as Skoll Roundabout. Uh, the site uh, does in fact live within, uh, sorry, sit within the parish of uh, Stuston within the uh, Palgrave Ward. The application seeks advertisement consent for the erection of a 12 metre high illuminated totem advertisement in conjunction with a drive-through restaurant approved by committee as part of planning permission reference DC 17.03.027 in June 2008. 2018, apologies. Uh, this is a uh, map showing the general location, so at the top of the district, uh, just south of the Norfolk border there. And this is a close-up uh, with the site shown in Hatched. This is Dis and Skull in Norfolk, just across the border. An aerial view of that previous slide. And a close-up, site in Hatched. And close-up again. This is the uh, site location plan. And this is a block plan of the site. So here we have the petrol station building, the petrol station pumps, the drive-through restaurant building, and associated parking, all approved under that previous application reference. The proposed elevations of the sign, so it'll be uh, 12 meters high with three advertisements, which will be inter internally illuminated. Has some street scene elevations. So this is from the A143 and from the A140. You can see the roundabout here, restaurant building adjacent to the uh, existing and proposed landscape. Um, this is a view taken from Old Bury Road, so to the south of the site across the uh, agricultural fields. And just zooming in on that, um, we can see the adjacent buildings, and this is the existing. Uh, petrol station totem sign. Um, the proposal will be, um, I believe, set behind uh, the existing uh, tree screening to the uh, south of the A143 there. Um, this is uh, approaching the junction, the roundabout. Um, we're on the uh, A140 here and the A143 going off in this location. The site is on the corner and you can see the existing landscaping. Um, the proposed totem will be uh, approximately in this location here. And then looking, uh, just coming around the roundabout there, A143 in this location, and the proposed totem will be visible just to the uh, left of this lamppost from my estimation. And uh, we're going uh, to the other side here, um, A143, uh, looking across the junction and you just might be able to make out the existing um, BP garage, which has um, recently been completed and in operation. And this is uh, taken from the, uh, the public access, uh, which has been actually improved um, as a result of the application from, uh, from Skull. And then from the, uh, uh, from the dual carriageway, which is the the end of the, um, that, that, well, that portion of the A140. Uh, just moving around to the left there. That's zooming into the uh, existing totem, which is uh, there at present for the petrol station. Uh, this is a photograph which has been uh, provided uh, by Councillor Byrne um, in association with the uh, item in the table papers. And uh, perhaps we can go back to that uh, when it's uh, councillor's turn to speak. Um, as per updates, uh, no updates from my point of view, and as in the papers, officer recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any qu questions, sir? Councillor Mansell, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, now, I, I, um, I think in, in one of your photographs, there was a currently a BP sign on the existing uh, petrol station. Uh, that is already there. Um, could you just tell me how high that is so that I can sort of visualise how high the new proposed totem will be? Uh, yes, the approval for that was nine metres. Can 
Councillor Matheson, then Councillor Humphreys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 um, I battled through the planning history a bit. And I, in fact, one of them actually came to committee, I think, uh, that when I was on it. But the, um, looking at the, the, the second and third ones down the list, 03257 and 03635, um, so are they are they different totems or the same totem and or, or I got some impression that we'd actually already approved this second totem pole somewhere uh, and that this was trying to move it but I'm not absolutely clear about that uh, yes uh, just to clarify um, reference uh, 18 3257 uh, that is for a similar proposal just in a slightly different location uh, the, the restaurant, yeah, drive through restaurant. Uh, um. Could you actually just show that on an overhead map? Yeah. Um, can I just clarify, should, should we be, uh, you know, if, if we come to the decision to grant this planning permission, um, will we then have the, um, you know, will it then be permissible to put two 12 metre totems up or are we actually removing the current one and suggesting it moves or not? That's right, do you, Alex, do you want to go first? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yes, that's actually a point I hadn't uh, really considered. I mean, presumably, I mean, I'm looking at uh, John well, and Ian here, we'd be able to add a condition to... Uh, I'll, I'll, yes, I mean, I think with honest, to be quite honest, with ad advertisement consent, it's meant to be a straightforward process that's a lot easier than normal planning applications and we only take into account amenity and highway safety. It's, I think there's possibly some room for legal argument because with a planning permission you have a red line and you impose conditions and you can impose all sorts of conditions as long as they're relevant and necessary. Um, an advert consent is a consent for one advert. I mean, I think it, ought, it probably ought to be possible to say if you display this you won't display another. But there's just some, that, I'm sure that's been done before. I mean, that's... May I? Yes, certainly. I'll finish. Uh, um, um, I don't know if anyone here remembers a, a solicitor called Keith Barber, and I do remember uh, some years ago having similar conversations about uh, all sorts of ways to allow one to go ahead and not the mm. other. Um, we can't do anything about the permission that's, well, the, the, the consent granted. That We can't control that retrospectively. We can only control this application. Um, in respect of this application, I'm going to ask if I'm correct here, ultimately it is not unreasonable to impose a condition that says that this shall not go ahead if the other has mm. been implemented. It is not perfect. Yeah. But I think that's a good word. Then. But Legally, that is probably is that as much well, as we can do. Yeah, very conscious, Without getting into legal agreements, I'm very so conscious that. I'm talking to the whole internet as well as this council and anyone li listening to the, and in a way that this is, but I think, you know, for the sake of transparency, um, it's, I think it's what your, John is suggesting is legally possible, but it's not as absolutely clear cut as I, being a cautious lawyer, would like, but I think it can be done. I'm not, I had to look into this quite recently for my other council, West Suffolk, and it's, I've not found any case law or inspector's decisions that are directly on this point, but I think it applying common sense, we ought to be able to do what John is saying. I'm happy to add that. Uh, uh, and John is happy to add that, so um, we'll see how it goes. So we're still on to questions, I think, aren't we? Are we? Yes. Yeah. I think we are. Um, Councillor Humphreys and then Councillor Mansell again, if I can come back to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Just for um, visualisation purposes, we know that the first tent pole is nine metres. How tall? are the street lights around the roundabout? Roughly, 12 meters?
Okay, okay. Um, well, th there's the photograph uh, for you there. Yeah, perspective. Uh, the true well, answer is I'm not sure how high those... We're uh, just looking up. Um, John's trying to see if he can find that as we progress through the, the conversation, if that's helpful, okay. to yes. find out. Because it, it's, um, it's an A road, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. so we need yes. to know what the height of the um, lamps might be. We'll come back to that if we may. Yep. Councillor Mansell, your question again. I, I just wondered whether in, in the uh, officer's discussions with the applicant, if he gave a reason as to why the sign is now needed to be moved... Uh, what appears to me to be a relatively short distance and is what is there an issue with the existing permission location? Uh, well, I think in the conversations I've had, I mean, it's not uh, set out in writing exactly why, but um, it was uh, to do with it being um, a little bit too close to that uh, boundary landscaping and to step it out a bit and for it to be a bit more uh, visual from the... Uh, a143 as you're coming from uh, from Norfolk. So just picking up on that point, my question is they're actually moving it back from the highway, aren't they? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Any further questions? And John's still looking for the size of the uh, the, the street lights. He have come up with something. Yeah. Let's see what he's got. Uh, I can't say for certain what these specific street light heights are. Um, the recommended height for the type of road that they are on is 10 metres. Uh, but I will caveat that if we're in the middle of a village, the streetlights may only be about 7 to 8 metres high. But in terms of the uh, highway carriageway, um, on the provision that these are the standard ones that apply to the right road type, they should be about, thereabouts 10 metres. But I, I will caveat that advice quite significantly. Thank you very much for that. So we now come to Councillor Byrne, if you would, please. Yes, you're on. <laughs> uh, the chair. Oh, pardon, I, I do beg your pardon. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, we have Parish Council Chairman of Stuston Parish Meeting. I do beg your pardon. Roger Greenacre, if you would, please. Sorry, I turned over my page and I looked at the ward member, so sorry. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the Planning Committee. Uh, I don't want to steal David's thunder, but and I appreciate what you're talking about today is the relocation, the reciting of, of this uh, pole sign. Uh, in considering relocating it, uh, on behalf of the Stuston Parish, I would ask you to consider whether it's justified or not. Um, I think as a society, we should avoid the proliferation of neon signs littering our landscape. And we've done a lot of work on this over the last few months, looking at, at uh, petrol filling station uh, uh, operations that also encompass other retail activities. And a very large number of such sites incorporate signage, for example, with the McDonald's sign, uh, within the pole sign, the monolith pole sign, of the, of the petrol retailer. And I appreciate this may be a bit <laughs> late in the day, but we would ask you to reconsider the justification for having a second illuminated sign which will add to the already excessive level of light pollution in that area in what is a rural location and that we should reconsider the possibility of incorporating the McDonald's logo within the BP monolith sign which exists all over the country. There are lots of precedents whereby this has happened before and there's no reason why, if McDonald's approved it, they could have their, uh, their advertising display incorporated within the BP monolith. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Greener? No? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Greenacre. Would you like to just take your seat again? A gentleman has got a question for you. Councillor Warboys, what, what is your question? Yes, uh, I was just following the debate. You're, you're quite clear this is going to be a second, si second sign in addition to the garage, existing garage totem. Indeed, yes. The garage totem exists. Yes. What they're asking for is a further sign, which is even higher 
than the BP sign, which is 12 meters against 10, and that is going to produce a considerable amount of additional illumination yes, it's in good. an area which is really, it's a rural location, and we're not talking about American highways here, we're talking about a village. Um, and really, there's no reason why the McDonald's sign could not be incorporated within the monolith. It happens all over the country, and we could do the same, and reduce the amount of, of the proliferation of illuminated signage littering our countryside. Thank you. Okay. Could you just put up the photograph of what's currently sort of available? If you'd like to return to your seat, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Well, have we got the garage? Garage. Has no, no, our own, the, the, the site. The site, yes. Where it is. Where, we're oh, looking. Where it is. There it is. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Well, what it is now. That's what it is now. Where? I think that shows it. Where? I can't see. Of the actual site. Ah. Yeah. Right, that's what I wanted, yes. Thank you. Just okay. to focus on it while Councillor. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's not in the area. It's the one in the area we want. Right. Um, paragraph 132 of the MPPF, if it hasn't been said already, mandates that advertisements should be subject to control only in the interests of amenity and public safety. Um, uh, public safety has not been challenged in this particular instance. I don't, I, I, I'm not going to uh, talk about it. However, notwithstanding those two facts only, um, notwithstanding that, I would also argue that if any advertisement is likely to cause harm to legally protected species, it has to be assessed in those terms as well, according to uh, the relevant EU directive. Therefore, I will concentrate, as have uh, Skoll Parish Council, Brum and Oakley Parish Councils, and Stuston <coughs> Parish Meeting, on the impact on local amenity. Now, on the subject of amenity, planning practice guidance includes the following. It says, in assessing amenity, the local planning authority would always consider the local characteristics of the neighborhood. For example, if the locality where the advertisement is to be displayed has important scenic, historic, architectural, or cultural features, the local planning authority would consider whether it is in scale and keeping with these features. Now, I just wanted to note the inclusion of scenic features in that list. This site at Stuston is located in the Upper Waveney Valley Special Landscape Area, which is recognised as having particular local landscape value as evidenced by policies in the current local structure plan. It is close to the Skoll Pocket Park, an area managed as a local nature reserve, which is located 250 metres east of the site. A recent survey of that park revealed the presence of several species of bat, one or two of which are now classed as rare or endangered. Now, a word or two about cumulative impact. It could be argued, indeed it probably has been argued uh, even this morning, that the signage already approved and now in place for the filling station element of the development itself, uh, development has itself a harmful visual impact on the local landscape. After all, there are now two large monolithic BP advertisement signs near the entrance and exit to the site. These, however, are part of what I think should be regarded as essential infrastructure, part of the road network, whose primary function is to notify the passing motorist of the opportunity to refuel. The opportunity to refuel the inner man at a fast food restaurant can hardly be described in the same essential infrastructure terms. And the proposed totem, which will be the tallest element on the entire site, is seen by many as a step too far in a cumulative impact sense. 
So, that if you consider that this 12 metre tall McDonald's totem, seven times the height of an average man, and illuminated throughout the hours of darkness, if you consider that it is one, an unnecessary and unacceptable intrusion into the visual and scenic community of the area, two, has an incongruously urbanizing effect on the character of the locality, three, represents an unwarranted hazard to nocturnal wildlife, most notably bats, and four, adversely impact on the amenity of adjacent dwellings about 100, 100 meters away, then you should refuse it on the grounds that it is harmful, it has a harmful impact on amenity. And in support of that, you can cite variously from, from the following policies. The MPPPF, MPPF para, paragraphs 132, 170A, local policies H16, local plan policies H16 uh, for one, which is protecting existing residential amenity, and that says to protect the existing amenity, the planning authority will refuse development that materially reduces the amenity and privacy of, ancient, of, of adjacent dwellings or erodes the character of the surrounding area. The cumulative effect of a series of proposals will be taken into account. Other local plan policies include CL2, CL4, protecting river valleys and floodplain, CL8, protecting wildlife habitat, CL22, which is advertisement in a countryside setting, and T6, which is specifically relating to petrol filling stations and other roadside services. And this one includes a provision that reads, there should be no adverse effect on the surrounding countryside, including its landscape or wildlife features. If you are minded to consider refusing this application, planning practice guidance has this to say. If consent for such signs has to be refused on amenity or public safety grounds, efforts should be made where practicable to suggest an alternative site or sign and to cooperate with the applicant in devising a signposting scheme which is acceptable in the locality. In your late papers today, I did give you a photograph of a similar BP filling station, stroke M&S convenience store, stroke McDonald's complex, near the Imperial War Museum at Duxford. It shows that the restaurant signage can be incorporated, if you can put that up on screen, Alex, please. It shows that the restaurant signage can be incorporated within the main BP totem like the ones at Stuston, which also advertise the M&S store, which is advertised there, and the Wild Bean Cafe, and the fuel prices, just as the Stuston ones do. So it would seem that a separate totem, three metres higher than the BP one, is not essential to the successful operation of a McDonald's restaurant. Thank you. Councillor Byrne, I have a question for you. There's already a permission a few metres away from this. And so if this fails, they'll put that up there. Would that not have the same effect that you're telling us that we should refuse it on these grounds? Is yes, that... it would. So... I'm at a loss to understand why it was granted in the first place. OK, well, that's but another that issue. But, but, but the answer is they would just build what's their permission Sorry. already. They would just be able to build what their permission is already. Yeah. Uh, of course they would. Yeah. They've okay. been granted thank you. permission for it. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. Is it not also true the pitch you sent us of the, um, of the service station in the late papers is very close, almost on the boundary actually, of Duxford Airfield? And the reason they wouldn't have gone for a totem type 12 metre advertising board and incorporating a garage one is because you're not allowed to endanger. Uh, persons using any highway, railway, waterway, dock, harbour or aerodrome and that's the reason. Um, so actually I, I, I understand what you were saying but I think your example is probably because of that. Probably. Uh, you would know more about that <laughs> than I do, uh, Councillor Humphrey. Um, it seems entirely plausible although I would have thought 12 metres 12 metres high for a, a low-flying aircraft was uh, 
the aircraft would be a, a bit too low. Yeah, I, um, I think we've de 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 strayed into debate rather than <laughs> um, a, a question on that one. Councillor Matheson, I believe you had a question. Yes, really, much the same point. I mean, do do you, the, the horse has bolted basically? Do you think that the the new location is worse than the existing location? Assuming that that. Uh, our experts can, can find a way of, of making sure we don't finish up with both of them. Um, I don't think there's a lot to be uh, a lot to be done between them. It's slightly further away from what would be a tree line, and therefore uh, has potentially very slightly less disruptive to foraging bats, but only potentially. Right, any further questions or we'll move into debate on this one? Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Mansell. Uh, thank you. Um, I, 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 I don't disagree at all with either the representative from Stuston Parish nor Councillor Byrne, but unfortunately we are where we are and there already is permission for a 12 metre high McDonald sign above that delightful tree line at the A140, A143 roundabout. And I think that advertising is a bit of a, a, bit of a tricky one because what's the point of an advertising board if it's below the tree line, nobody will see it. Much as I don't really like McDonald's and I don't really like advertising, uh, there is little point in putting an advertising slogan up that no one can see. And I think we are in an unfortunate situation because I agree with you that had it been um, the Golden Arches or whatever they want to call it, underneath the BP sign on the BP sign, I think we'd all be quite happy. Um, but we already have got permission for this 12 metre high totem. So all of those reasons that you said for refusal aren't really gonna hold water because they could put it up anyway, a few metres away. And you just answered Councillor Matheson's question about which one is better or worse. And this new one sounds like it might be slightly better, but what I don't want is two of them. One is bad enough, but we certainly don't want two of them. So uh, unless we can rescind the other planning permission, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in this case because it's already got permission to put one there um, and I don't want to. So um, I know the experts say we can do it, but I want some sort of guarantee that we're not going to get to. Um, but unfortunately, I wish we'd uh, looked at this a few months back and perhaps it would have been a different story. Thank you for that, Councillor Mansell. It was an officer delegated decision previously. I think we're probably all going to struggle with the same comments. Um, John is busy working out some sort of tacit agreement that would sit legally, comfortably um, on that basis, that you know you can have this but not the other. Yes, Councillor Gould. Thank you. It, it seems that this is um, a where question, not an if question, that already having been determined. I just wonder picking up um, what seems to be the mood of the committee in terms of whether matters like this are appropriate for delegation as opposed to uh, committee consideration. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gould. With regards to that, that's, that is indeed an interesting question. Um, however, it's, it's up to, it's detailed in the planning charter. Um, Councillor Byrne has called this in, and it, or, sorry, it's been referenced by the um, Acting Chief Planning Officer, due to its controversiality, there has been on, there has been quite a controversial site in the area, um, hence why it has been here today. Um, with regards to dealing with committee or delegation, there's the set delegation policy, um, but with regards to this, it wouldn't usually meet the criteria, except only in that it's the um, it's deemed as controversial by the Acting Chief Planning Officer in this case. So it's, it's more of a dependent on, as we like to say in planning, on a case-by-case -case basis of what would come. Um, just sort of following on from that, that's up to the ward members to then sort of actively look when these cases are listed, which we get every week. And, um, but it's a good point to have brought forward, but if we brought every advertising one to committee, I think it would bog us down a little bit. Yeah. Now, did I see... No, I was just... 
Hang on a minute, John, <laughs> Councillor. I think I saw two up here. Did I see Councillor Humphreys and then Councillor Mayer? Did you have your hand up? No, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. I hope this helps. And if I'm reading it right, then I hope it will. So if you go to page 206, previous permissions, 3.1. Um, we already know the, the advertisement consent was permitted for the totem pole of 12 metres in the current position. Um, and it says there already, um, blah, 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 not yet implemented. Current proposal is proposed as an alternative. Now, surely if it's an alternative, that is the answer you're after, is it not? Uh, it's 206, 3.1. So the alternative is the fact that there is only one, surely. Yeah, so long as we can secure that, yeah. make sure that's... Yeah, 201, 301. The, the problem with planning is often timing and I can happily put a condition on this application that states something to the effect that the hereby totem shall not be implemented should the other totem uh, under whichever application number that's under has first been uh, has been first been implemented okay so what happens then is we erect this totem pole and then afterwards, the other one goes forward. And I think that's, so I can stop the one coming forward first, but I can't necessarily stop, stop it coming afterwards. Stop. And uh, the previous totem pole has probably got an expiry time, uh, if it's a standard advert condition, I think it's up to five years. Yes. Um, so it's got, it's got five years, then it has deemed consent, but subject to discontinuance. Yeah. Which we, and, and if there were, we, yes. I cannot guarantee a hundred percent that you would possibly get two, but I would ask the question in terms of reasonable logic why you would have two on the basis of the very small distance between them within the same locality. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's just legal clarity then. What's the, what's the word alternative mean? Well, I think that, that seems to reflect the, the applicant's intentions, yeah. I presume. So, the word, word alternative, ours, not theirs, and therefore um, the matter would still be in doubt. In mm -hmm. fact, we've used the word alternative. Or is it that the committee is relying on that word when making its decision. Can we just have five minutes with legal? Because I was just saying, can we defer this? But I think they want to just go and concur somewhere. So I'll just hold the meeting for the moment while we just have the legal conference. Can you not discuss it? Actually, ladies and gentlemen, can we just wait until the...
Right, we're reconvening, so are we re-videoing? Thank you very much indeed. So, um, has our legal uh, guidance come up with something sensible, please? We have come up with a new condition. Um, one that we think solves the deadlock. So, I started by saying the hereby totem shall not be implemented should the other totem under permission, whichever one number it is, shall be, has first been implemented. So that stops that situation. Part two, if the other totem subsequently takes place, this totem shall be removed from site. Yeah. That, that is yes. it's simple. We feel that we have justification to impose that condition, given the potential accumulative harm of having those two signs close to each other within that same proximity. And at the same time, the intentions of the applicant have been very clear from the outset that this is an alternative. So we do feel that should this be challenged, we have reasonable basis to defend ourselves robustly. Thank you. I think that's eminently sensible. Councillor Mas Mansell, please. Um, I did have another question. It was nothing to do about the recite reciting of the, of the poll. But um, Councillor Byrne did mention lighting um, affecting the wildlife. And I just wondered if the McDonald's restaurant has permission to be open 24 hours a day um, and if it has uh, if it hasn't I just wonder whether we could do anything about it but I can see that the offices are nodding so it is open 24 hours a day so presumably the sign will be lit 24 hours a day 365 days of the year um, yeah, as part of the uh, previous permission for the use of a site there were no restrictive conditions so, on, so potentially it could be yeah yeah Right, so there we are. So do we want to move Councillor Mansell? Well, with all of those caveats about the, the two sites, potential sites for the um, sign, um, much as I don't like it, I'm going to propose that we um, go along with the officer recommendation with the added condition just outlined to us by Mr Payton G, um, that, and we go ahead and grant uh, permission. But, you know, I don't like adverts, but I don't think we've got any other choice in this particular situation. Thank you for that, Councillor Mansell. I must admit, I'm pretty much of the same view of you. But did I see a hand go up there? I'll, I'll sit in there. Yes, thank you. Right, so I have a proposal and a seconder with John's amendment to it. All those in favour, please vote. So we're unanimous. And thank you very much indeed. So the meeting is now closed until this afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs>